my my painting practice was like fuck the canvas up and then like off. figure out how to save it you know whereas like my tattoo practice is like the total opposite it's like yeah you can't fuck shit up that's how i feel <laughs> yeah. that's how I feel. everything has to be right right off the bat or well, whatever that's what i was doing with my painting sometimes i was like bringing that tattoo discipline into the painting and i found it's like almost stressful in a way yeah so that's why i started doing those like just shitting like but now actually i'm starting to do that with my tattooing like i'm starting yeah. to like try to take a painterly approach and like sometimes maybe just do background layers the first session yeah and then like the next session is like black like there's not actually mm. black the first session it's only like grays and like oh like like literally thinking of it like layering because mm -hmm. like i tried doing it first where i would do like i would like paint on with paint brushes and stuff on the skin and like try with, to create all this layering with and like stuff. the stencil like you yeah, would take that, like, like the purple Knox violet or whatever that do you know natalie Knox? No, they make like a, like a, yeah, yeah. So she like, uh, she's a super dope tattooer. I, I can't remember exactly where she is at somewhere in Europe, I believe. Um, but yeah, she makes these like, like essentially that violet ink. Oh. Um, it's probably the same shit that is used for like printing. I was thinking that you just take like the paper and so put, yeah, like, people are doing that too. Like I'm pretty sure there's like, water. On yeah. It. Yeah. That, or I think it's alcohol. Like you can like oh. cut it up into strips and then like put it in a bottle with alcohol and like shake it up. And oh. I did like the first time I ever attempted it, I would, it was like my third month of tattooing or something back when I was an apprentice. And yeah, I was just taking alcohol and like a stencil sheet and a paintbrush and I'd like rub it in out yeah. put it in alcohol and then like rub it on the stencil sheet and then paint on the skin. And it worked for, painting onto the skin the second you start tattooing though it just all wiped it right oh. off like it didn't like i don't know like adhere like a, yeah yeah like it, it would it wouldn't does. dry yeah, yeah. yeah so so that that knock stuff actually stays oh on. yeah it's that shit like if 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 you pretty much got to make a decision and decide you like that decision like really really quickly or get it off the skin or it's because it be just dries yeah, yeah it's actually it's interesting you bring that up though because I, I was thinking of experimenting with that I, ha I had someone hit me up recently something more like along the lines of like your kind of work but yeah. like with my like he wanted colors okay and, and I it's something i always wanted to do yeah, like yeah. like some geometric shit like with no actual like main like focus like no woman face or skull oh, okay he just wants like a design yeah, yeah. so just purely abstract yeah but he was saying like maybe breaking like you know so i was thinking of doing something cool where it's like just black or like a fade of color yeah, yeah. and then it just breaks into like negatives but also has like that like paint the abstract stuff with like the negatives cut you know i guess no, shit totally. like you do yeah, yeah. that's why it's so interesting to me i like literally love that stuff like the oh, way yeah. you your work you know specifically Thanks, yeah yeah like a, that, like almost like acidy kind yeah, of vibe, yeah. but it also yeah, it's has like a lot of like. I mean, what I I started with like a lot of like wood grain mm. inspiration oh. for a lot of the abstract shit. And yeah. I was literally just like taking pictures of floorboards and mm. like tables at restaurant, you know, just like the knots and then like yeah. the way it spirals out from that center point. Um, and then I got really into like the shumanagashi stuff, like the Japanese ink and water yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. technique. And I started doing those at home and like making kind of like references from just doing ink and water and shit. And now I just feel like I have like a, a rough understanding of the way that like ink was moving in the water or the way like wood grain moves. Yeah. Um, so now it's like very rare that I'm really even using anything as a reference. Like I'm just like drawn drawing. from your head. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I feel like I've like each time I like find little moments in it that I'm like, Ooh, that, that like lock that part in. Yeah. And then I'm doing that moment again, you know, like in a different way yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah. but it's like, I keep reapplying that same move. And it might've been work. an accident. In yeah, a way. yeah, no, exactly. The first, first time it pretty much always is. It's yeah. Like, Ooh. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. I always wanted to do something like, like I was saying, like yeah. more abstract, like a big scale. Like, yeah. But, but it's with... hard though, dude. Cause like the, the hardest part with that shit, especially when you're like doing it for the first few times, it's like, you don't have a reference necessarily of like how you're going to do it, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And then you start doing it on this person and like that person's energy plays everything into oh, yeah. like how you feel working through it, you know? Like, so I started uh, maybe like two years ago, I wanted to just do like really, really abstract shit, like paintbrush type marks. And uh, I had seen a sleeve on a client of mine from Lee Stewart. Have you heard of her? No, I never heard of her. I believe she's like in, I don't know, she bounces all around. Um, I, I think she, her home base might be Amsterdam, but I'm not 100% on that. But yeah, Lee Stewart art, she does these like incredible brush stroke super super minimal super simple in theory you know but like 
when you actually see it, it's like rare that people can really make like a paintbrush stroke on skin that actually looks like, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. has the right fade out and everything like that. Sure, yeah. So I saw, I had been following her work for years, but then I had a client come in who had a sleeve from her and I like could actually see it in person and see the like technique behind it, you know? And yeah. I saw a lot of it was actually like, like almost like whipped dots or like very intentional dots to kind of make that like, like kind of brush, like drag kind of look. Yeah. Um, and that like helped me so much in like breaking down how to make a brush stroke, you yeah. know? And then like, I, I kind of started messing around with it, but yeah, I, I did maybe like five or six of those like full sleeves where they're all just like purely like, you know, it started with maybe one brush stroke and I was like, oh, maybe I need to build the whole composition before I start. And like, you know, started like kind of figuring little things out. But yeah, it was the client that played everything into it. Like if the client was like, you know, just seemed so like excited and like, you know, like, like stoked about every little thing, then I was feeling really good. And, you know, like it was like, yeah. it gave me that freedom and that confidence. But like, I also had a couple of clients where like, you know, they wouldn't say anything like they would yeah, yeah, yeah. go over and look in the mirror and be like, and then come and lay back down. And it's like, I'm like, fuck, am I just like, yeah, am I just like fucking this person's skin up? And they're just like too nervous to tell me to stop or something. You yeah. know? And it was like, yeah, it was definitely hard to be super confident. I love that. Them, I, 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 it's, and I think that's not just for you or your style. Oh, totally. It's for yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, but sometimes I, I read the person's energy, like just like maybe I didn't make the design fully, like say they want their dog. Right. Oh, yeah, but they're yeah, like, yeah. I want it in space or something, you know, but I, I have the picture of the dog, but when they walk in, I like to tell they're like a high energy person, like with a certain belt buckle on. And I'm like, you need like red, you know what I mean? Oh, like totally. you, you're yeah, giving yeah. me real red energy, you know, like, yeah. like, or, or, or someone's like real soft and like, this well, and that's, like, what's so hard with like getting all the requests through email. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, it's like so short realistically through email, you know, we're making this huge decision on somebody's yeah. body, but it's like, they reach out and, you know, fill out your booking form. You respond back with the facts they respond back with, you know, the, the, the deposit and like yeah. choosing the date or whatever you respond back with the info and that's like pretty much it, you know? So it's right. like, and maybe you saw, you know, they sent a shitty photo like this and like, you know, you saw like a fraction of an yeah. arm or something like that. Even though you and asked then they, for the whole yeah flat. Yeah. And then they like come in and they're like, you know, they look completely different than this image you created yes. in your head or yes. like, you know, their personality is totally different exactly. than the way their email read and shit like that. And like, so yeah, I used to do so much. I mean, I still do a lot of like preparing, but I used to do a lot more preparing where I, I would have like full mock-ups, like fully rendered every single view, you know, and then the person would come in and, you know, I'd maybe have like five or six concepts to show them and they'd be like, holy, sh you know, super yeah. overwhelmed, which was good. You know, like they like felt like they were able to make a really informed decision. Um, but then like, yeah, uh, last year me and my buddy went to Europe and we both got tattooed by two different, uh, like kind of abstract artists in Europe and like both of their processes were so like, like, a, like intuitive about you as a, you know, they don't draw anything beforehand. They don't have anything ready to go when you come in, like yeah. you come in and you chat for like an hour or an hour and a half and you're just kind of like, you know, like as an American, you're kind of like normally we'd be like tattooing or, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like there's like this yeah sense of like rush or time, you know, like for sure. Whereas there it was like having a tea and a cigarette yeah. and like sitting at the window and just like talking about nothing tattoo related. Mm -hmm. And they're just trying to like get a feel for you. Like I even showed up with my buddy to his appointment and then like, they were like, uh, like actually could, could you like leave for like an hour or two and like come back like when we're actually to your buddy? Tattoo no, to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they didn't want me there. Yeah, like while, hovering. Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. like it was like about their connection, mm -hmm. and, you know. And I like really liked that. I was like, yeah. oh, like, like because like I felt like they were able to make decisions off of like yeah, like the energy of you and like you know just kind of like like how you look, how like you. Know, I feel like you pretty quickly once you see the person you can kind of figure out like what actually feels maybe right for them absolutely um uh, but yeah through email and all that shit it's like i know i feel the same like if if, if uh, i'm doing a tattoo and a chick walks in and she you know she's got green hair and colored shoes on like yeah, yeah I, like, oh yeah this is gonna work yeah I'm, i know she's not gonna be shy about <laughs> yeah, like yeah. me using a lot of colors yeah, you know totally. but if some guy comes in with like an armani button down and black jeans like yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe we're gonna do black and gray with like red accents yeah, you yeah, know like totally. and, it, and it really usually goes hand nah, in totally. hand with their but sometimes even their appearance doesn't tell everything sometimes 100%. it's their personality yeah, yeah, yeah. behind that yep. you know yeah. yeah and that's the other thing too like sometimes i'll be like drawing and like you know people 
will give me just like complete creative freedom. And they're like, I love everything you do. And I'm like, all right. Like, you know, at first I love that email. Yeah, yeah. And then I sit down, you know, two or three days before to start like kind of thinking about it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, I need something. Give me no direct, like I have like so many, like, in, like I'm, most people are like, oh no, like everything you do is super consistent. But I'm like, I have like eight different directions. Like sub I styles. Feel, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I could do like flowery stuff that seems like gentle and feminine. I can do the savage flowery stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like, you know, like super heavy, like tons of fucking black and like, you know, like shit that looks like you'd or from mad max or something you no, know like, yeah for sure yeah like i have all these different aesthetics and so sometimes when people are like full freedom i'm like what am i like what if i design this like super intense thing and then they come in and they're like very soft and yeah like, gentle you know no, i like, agree man yeah. i do the same thing too sometimes i, I go by their other tattoos in a way totally, weird yeah, like yeah. i like i'll be putting bold lines around something like in my tattoo because i see they have like a lot of like neo trad and like no, their other totally arm but then sometimes i go like painterly and like yeah. you know more like total realism and sometimes the geometric you know like but then it's funny sometimes like if you're you know doing big stuff and you're working on people like multiple times and stuff like that transformation of the person like i yeah. have some clients where it's like i did a a sleeve to start on them or even just like a big single day project on them and in my mind that was it for them you know yeah. like they weren't going to do more than that it kind of even didn't even really seem like it fit them or whatever yeah and i was like kind of like huh i'm surprised they want that you know yeah and then now they're doing a bodysuit with me. And yeah, like, you yeah. know, they're now they look like you know that yeah. part almost. Yeah, they like they became. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, they like like it like fits now, but it never thought it fit. You yeah, know, at the first session, you like transformed yeah, them yeah. almost. Yeah, and that's a trip for sure. Also, like, on the contrary, though, I do believe too. Even your like like so the fact that I have like my own environment totally almost is like works in the other direction. Like when people come in here, you know, and I got some neon lights and like this like you know, modern like vibe. Like sometimes I feel like that almost, they feed my off my energy as well. Like, I don't know if you felt that. What do you mean by that? Like the way you're saying you've like kind of feel their energy to like how to go about the design. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe somebody like they never came to a private studio or, Oh, totally. And, and I mean, they come in here and they're like, Oh, I could just sit down and relax and like yeah. have like whatever, like a, you know, want a glass of whiskey or like whatever. Yeah. And they're like, cool. And there's, uh, what do you want to watch? And, oh yeah. I mean, they're I, vibing off me that they almost might get more inspired to like open up more. with their oh, design. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel like we, uh, yeah, ever since honestly, ever since like working for Michael Perry, that's kind of been a part of it is mm. like the, the vibe and the studio and all that, like people come in and it's like, most of them have never been tattooed in an environment that is private yeah. and is like, kind of on the higher end of sure, things and yeah. also like actually personal, you know, like yeah. maybe they went to a kind of more traditional style walk-in shop exactly. where they didn't even know the artist name that tattooed them. And like maybe the artist asked them their name, at, you know, it's like, yeah. it, it was so cold and impersonal and, yeah, whatnot, exactly. and then they come and get tattooed in like a, a private environment with someone that's like cares about what they're doing and is inspired and is like, yeah. you know, like happy to be at work that day and everything right. and like grateful, you know, it's like this mutual gratefulness on both sides or whatever. And they're like, man, like I'm never doing that other way again. Like this is exactly this yeah. is sick. It's like, like when you, or like, do you ever t like you tattoo someone and you almost convert them to like a collector? Kind oh, hundred percent. Like I've tattooed yeah, yeah. a kid that might've just had, like you said, some walk-in tattoos yeah. or whatever. And then I did like some cool thing on them and like, you know, talked them off of putting like the word in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then like, totally. they just get it now. Yep. And then the next time I see them, they got like their whole leg done by yep. like, you know, all of my someone friends. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. And then they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I collect now. Like, you know, yep. and I'm like, Oh cool. Like, and like you felt responsible for like educating them. No, in a weird totally. way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've and like, it's happen. like, it's a weird thing, even just with like, you know, meeting people randomly, like on the, like at the grocery store or like yeah. know, at a concert or like wh whatever out and about. And it's like, yeah, it's like such a hard thing sometimes. Cause like, obviously like, yeah, once you're heavily tattooed, people come up to you all the time. Like, you know, t it's like so much more normalized and like, sure. You know, like people want to ask questions and all that kind of stuff. And like, sometimes it can, you know, almost feel like annoying or like, you know, like like a waste of your time to even entertain the conversation or whatever. Sure. But then in the back of my mind, like there's so many of those conversations that have turned to being clients that yeah. have turned to then being bodysuit clients. Yeah. And it's like people I'm going to work on for the next four or five years, you know, like on yeah. a pretty consistent basis. And now like we're homies and they're dope, <laughs> yeah. you know, but like I met them at a rock climbing gym and they were like, Oh, that's really cool. I've never seen yeah. that. Like, you know, they were just like, inquiring a little bit and it seemed like it wouldn't be a client yeah so like yeah I, I find myself just like in in those scenarios a lot like trying to like 
like I don't know, like like step out of my initial reaction sometimes. I'm with like, you on that, yeah, yeah. I, like, especially oh, moving here. Not do anything, you know, like, because I was always like, I guess what's that quote? Like the closed mouth don't get fed. Yeah, like yeah. I I made like a full circle on that because I used to have like the cool guy, like I'm not eh, whatever. Like someone mentions my tattoos yeah, and I would just be like, I would just say thanks, man. Like yeah, not yeah. and then. You know, being here in a new city, I actually had a, a guest artist come and we were going out and he was like saying, you know, I got a bar, like the bartender would be like, oh, cool tattoos. And he would be like, oh, we're tattoo artists yeah, and, yeah. and show them like our Instagrams yeah. and stuff like that. And then they would follow me. And then yep. I'm like, now I'm going to the bar all the time. And they're like, hey, Bobby. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they're like becoming friends and stuff. No, and I'm totally. like, so I started like doing that too. And yeah. I was like, hey, wh wh why not? Like, does it hurt to like show them what I do? Never. And then now I'm finding the complete. Yeah, it's like my favorite thing now yeah, yeah. in a weird way. Like I kind of came back around on it. Cause I used to think it was like kind of corny, you know, like, no, Oh, totally. I'm a tattooer, yeah, man, yeah. you know? Well, and like, there's certain settings for sure. Mm -hmm. Like it definitely like a lot. Uh, it was funny. I was talking about this with uh, some people at the convention yesterday, but it's like, yeah, a lot of my homies know if we're like out and about in some, you know, big public environment or yeah. whatever with lots of people. And somebody inquires about one of their tattoos I did. They're like, yeah, oriented art, like check them out on Instagram. Even though I'm like, Standing, standing there, there right yeah. next to him yeah. and actually like i had this girl get tattooed by me recently who met one of my clients at a rock climbing gym and that's like how she found out about me and everything and i was also there at the gym and so when she came in and she saw me she was like wait a minute you were you were with the guy at the gym when i asked him about you like why didn't he just tell me to like come over and talk to you I was like, oh yeah that's actually kind of like a thing with the homies yeah, yeah, you know yeah. like, and like i was climbing you yeah know? yeah like exactly I, like yeah. we were we were there not working you know yeah, like yeah. and so like a lot of the times obviously they don't turn into clients you know so yeah. it's like this yeah but sometimes i've noticed like ones that haven't turned into clients for me they just turn into like friends totally yeah, yeah yeah or they're showing it to other people that then turn into you know it's like exactly. it never hurts it to doesn't hurt have people know what you're doing or and just like was, i'm a regular at the bar now and like they're like you know here's a drink on me yeah like, totally you know? that's <laughs> yeah. like how i am with the coffee shop yeah and shit like yeah, that. yeah yeah like yeah they are, like slowly started being like what do you do you know like and like 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 i'm guessing you're a tattoo artist yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah and then they like following you and maybe they're doing cool shit too like i'm at this really cool photographer exactly and like you know it's just like people that now i'm following too and like we're reacting to each other's shit and yeah, yeah. It's cool. it took me moving to a new city to do that i think yeah. like because when when i was home you know so comfortable there yeah, you, you kind of yeah you're yeah. like setting your ways but yeah. like out here i realized that that's pretty important like no, you know totally. like you said i met like painters and like you know yeah. i have paint nights here and like some you know painter i met at the coffee shop whatever yeah that's like i kind of learned that through just doing guest spots like i started uh traveling by myself and going and doing a guest spot and prior to that like if I was like home, you know, and I, I would never go out to eat at a restaurant by myself, you know, like yeah. I, I would always get my drink to go, you know, like I would just never be yeah. sitting somewhere by myself or mm -hmm. whatever, or just talking to somebody random. And now I try to do that everywhere I go. I'm like, I, you know, it took a little bit to like force myself yeah. out, you know, into it. Like human interaction could be weird sometimes or whatever. But yeah, now it's like, if I'm doing a guest spot, like I'm going to go to that restaurant that, I want to eat at and sit down and eat. And then maybe the server's dope as fuck or the bartender's dope as fuck. And yeah, you just end up meeting, like having actual, like genuine connections with people yeah. rather than. And I find that when you're alone, that happens more often. Oh, you're forced <clears throat> into it because you know, yeah. you're not like in a closed bubble. off. Yeah. You know, like, when you're with your friend, you just, you're, you, you put off closed energy because totally, yeah, you yeah. two are yeah, talking. Exactly. So Pete, you're like less approachable. Yeah. But when you're alone, like the, the waitress or waiter might actually like, open more dialogue with you oh, and then you're more open to it. So then it actually like happens. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I like moving here alone. That's like, I've been about that life right now. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here like a little over a year. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I work alone. You, you work alone as well, right? Kind of. I, I, so I have a private studio and then, uh, it's my partner and my homie that I work alongside. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so you have like, some camaraderie. Yeah, definitely. Way. And it's, it's super cool. We're all like, you know, best friends and we go to shows together, you know, like we do everything together. So it's like a really cool, like we literally have like a tattoo group chat that's like tat fam and it's just like yeah you know, we're yeah just like yeah. constantly talking and like yeah like he's back home working by himself right now and he's like are you guys come coming back <laughs> yeah. at any point like i miss you guys like so it, it's a really it's a yeah like the best work situation i've had that's sure. awesome man yeah yeah i'm trying to build like a little bit of a team here now yeah. i just hired a girl named mella but she didn't start yet so yeah. 
I will yeah, have it's that. hard. It's like, you know, like energy, like, yeah, yeah like energies are a big thing. And like, for me, it's everything. Yeah. 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 You got to have the right people around or otherwise, yeah. Like you don't want to go to work because, you know, or if you got some bullshit going on there or whatever, it just gets super uncomfortable. And like that, that's not, and like your client can probably feel it too. Mm-hmm. And like, that's not right. I remember yeah. those feelings like yeah. going into a tattoo shop with like this, like resentment. Oh yeah. Like, and, and just being like mad in my head totally. while I'm working all day. Like, oh, fuck, yeah. I don't want to listen to this music, yeah. you know? And, and I, it's weird because I almost forgot about it because being here alone, like that's not something I deal with now. Oh, and, totally. and if yeah, I'm yeah. mad at something or something's like off or bother me, it's like something I can literally fix because it's my own. No, totally. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's like on you if it's yeah. not the way you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck, like I need to straighten things up. Like, yeah. well, that's on me. It's not yeah, like yeah. the owner is not taking care yeah, of yeah, the clutter. Like nobody's cleaning the fucking floor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, exactly. I got to clean the floor. Yeah. I got to clean the floor. <laughs> yeah. So I could, yeah. which, you know, sometimes you still get mad at yourself. Oh, no, yeah. 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 Like slack all the fucking time <laughs> yeah, yeah. for sure but, yeah you know. it's so funny yeah so you mentioned before working with michael perry was that was that your first shop that you worked at so i did uh my apprenticeship i did up in uh middleton wisconsin which is like right by madison wisconsin mm-hmm. um so i was like commuting like three hours a day you like about an hour a and a half each way yeah yeah um, for about a, a little over a year um, and then, yeah, I was probably only about like maybe a little past six months, six or seven months into tattooing when I met Michael Perry. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we kind of just like hit it off right away. And he like offered, he technically didn't even have a station, but he wanted me to work yeah. there. And so he like, was like, if you're willing to kind of like work part time and I was like, hundred percent, you know, like yeah. most of my clients were coming from Milwaukee already. So that was like kind of a pain in the ass getting yeah. them to drive three hours for their appointment, you know, like, yeah. like, Oh, are you ever going to come to more? You know, like, and then, uh, and then yeah, obviously the commute on my end also sucked. And then, yeah, yeah it was just really nice. Like getting to get into a private scenario in my hometown, like, yeah. Know, with it, good artists. Oh, and stuff, man, yeah. yeah. Like it was terrifying, dude. Like, I would have Michael come over and I'm like, you know, like literally like learning to tattoo still, you know, yeah. like I have very little understanding of what I'm doing and shit. And like, yeah, he's like standing over my shoulder and I'm like sweating and like, you know, <laughs> just like so nervous. And like, yeah, I had, there was like a bunch of artists that were there and the, that like, yeah, like influenced me so much. And yeah. like, and then, yeah, like guests coming through all, like, I'm pretty sure the first day I ever went over there, it was like Lindsay's birthday and uh david vega was tattooing her and trent was there and yeah like i'm just like you're just sweating dude i'm corner. like a, i'm like an infant in this <laughs> industry you know and i'm just like oh my god like oh my god like you know that dude like the best you know photorealism art you know it's yeah. just like it was fucking crazy well it's a cool uh, story to hear because yeah. i know like uh younger tattoo artists have like said that to me and like i'm just thinking like hey man what's up or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and i'm watching them tattoo like thinking like oh nothing of it and they're yeah. like I was so nervous, oh, and it's, but it's, it's, it's something I think we all go through and yeah. it's almost like necessary in oh, a weird way. Thousand percent. I think that's like the good stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, yeah, I mean, I, I credit so much of where I'm at in my career and whatnot to that experience of like working for Michael and just like all those connect, like that was the first conventions I ever did. Well, that's how I met Michael. you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, and Michael Perry is like the, uh, he's like a, a glue for like a community. In oh, a weird way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, he's got a weird way of like networking or connecting yeah. with anyone. There's a lot of people like that that I've like been meeting through this industry. Like, like, yeah, Michael Perry, like everyone I have been connected to through Michael is somebody I value the shit out of that connection. And they're like good connections. They're genuine. They're good people. They're good artists. Like, you know, they're connected with all these other people that then can like kind of put me in touch and like, you know, get me guest spots or whatever. Yeah. Um, And yeah, I've been getting tattooed by Fibs for like the last about two years. Um, And it's the same with that man. It's like, everyone i've met through fibs has been like the most genuine yeah good people they're these insane you know presences on social media and stuff like that and these insane artists with these crazy careers you know they've been tattooing 20 years and all yeah. this stuff and like they're just super genuine and they follow sure. me and they like you know like share my work you know it's just like it's such a cool community yeah um and i think for a while i was kind of exposed to like the other side of that when i first kind of was like getting into tattooing it was like a lot more negative and like Mm -hmm. like like you're a part of you know this squad so like you don't talk to those people or whatever and i I don't like and you hear that a lot and it's uh, again cool you bring it up because like i'll have young tattoo artists messaging me dming me and stuff like how do i you know i'm in this negative environment with this you know guy that doesn't want me to do a seminar you know like all this stuff like how do i get into like the you know like the 
upper echelon or like better, you know, crew of people that are, you know, totally. positive and all that stuff. And I'm just like, in a weird way though, I think that it's like cool that someone might experience that kind of adversity because I think then when you do kind of like, totally, I think it's all necessary. You yeah. Know? It's like, like yeah. you gotta have shitty experiences to understand the good, like when you're in a good experience, it's like the yin and the yang, yeah, you know? And I think that when you finally like find your way or, or test you to, to, push you to find that way. You yeah. know what I mean? And when you do it, it's so, you know, rewarding a hundred percent. Yeah. And, uh, but it's funny cause like even I, I can't remember like meeting Michael for the first time, but he just like introduced himself to me. Yeah. So like nonchalantly, oh, yeah. it was just like, yeah, yeah Michael, Perry. you know, like, yeah. So it was funny. Like the way we actually <laughs> met was like, he, uh, so he was like, um, trying to get the shop painted by, I think Mayo, Oh, uh, like that. You did the mural there, yeah, right? Yeah, so right? I, I did a mural for him. And like, so I had been painting this gym there in Milwaukee. Like I'd done like everything, like fucking painted the windows, the walls, like the boxes for the work, you know, like everything yeah. that could be painted was painted in there by me. And I was like every week going in and changing murals. And like, you know, it was like, they kind of were paying for my supplies and I was in college, like doing art school and stuff. And so yeah. if I painted, I got supplies, which then I could make more paintings with, I you see, know, so yeah. like I wasn't getting paid, but it was like, still felt like an opportunity and I was learning and like yeah. progressing and all of that. And, uh, and yeah, and like, I believe his brother-in-law or like a friend of his, or I can't remember the exact connection, but they worked out there. And so when, was they, it Ricky? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Strength. Makes strength yeah, movement. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he showed Michael my work and then Michael had reached out to me and like started following me. And I remember like, yeah, when sanctuary tattoo gallery followed me and Michael Perry, followed yeah, me, yeah, you know, yeah. I was just like, whoa like yeah, this yeah. is so epic you know <laughs> yeah. like um and i remember like driving by on water street and like seeing the door and maybe like seeing him out having a cigarette and being like oh man like that's that's the dude yeah you know? yeah like, but like way too <laughs> With nervous Gucci so, shoes on yeah him. exactly like <laughs> like way too nervous to like go in and introduce myself yeah. or anything and then uh he posted that he was going to be at like the, the milwaukee tattoo convention like the villain arts one or whatever and um, I was going to be getting tattooed there. And so I was just like, ah, oh, like, I'll see you there. And he's like, yeah, dude, come say, say what up or whatever. Yeah. And so like, you know, I saw him like outside having a cigarette and I was like, like all nervous, but I was just like, fuck it. I got to like introduce myself, you know? And like right away, he was just so genuine and kind and whatnot. And then yeah. like, yeah, that day I ended up like hanging out by his booth a bunch. And then the next day I came in, like I wasn't, didn't need to be there for anything, but I just came to hang out and chat more with him. And like, I spent the three days just like talking to him basically. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like that next day he was like, Hey, like it's my, my wife's birthday. If you want to like come through and hang out. And I'm just like, Whoa. I think I was, I think I might've been there because I, I remember him mentioning you really? a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that was, uh, I forget what year it was, yeah. but that, that was like probably like, 2017 because i think he just opened right or something yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was like right after yeah sanctuary. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like three or four months in. yeah exactly yeah. yeah i would think i was there it was my first time in milwaukee oh yeah yeah and, and you know he brought me there too you yeah. know he's like and oh, that was the thing like like you know it was like jacob chef like there was just so many people that came through that space yeah um and yeah it was so inspiring to like see tattoos that good and like you know be able to like when i'm on a break with a client go over and watch and even though it was like you know a bunch of color dudes and realism dudes and like all like totally different subject matter and genre yeah. and technique and application and all this still just like being there and like feeling that pressure and like getting to sure. watch and shit like dude i, I just, definitely feel like that like you know made me just try so just hard. being around greatness yeah yeah 100%. yeah 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 it was inspiring and like, yeah yeah it felt good no that's how i felt like working at love machine you know just yeah, like exactly. what, everyone right. like just walk around and yeah. it's like yeah it's like yeah. you don't even want to book maybe one of those tattoos that's just a work day you know yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like it needs to be something yeah homie gonna, next to you is crushing exactly. some fucking tattoo that's gonna go win awards at every yeah, convention yeah. in like yeah. the country yeah and you're like sitting there like oh shit like i bet you know i better bring my a game every day yeah. Which is a weird juxtaposition, though, for like working in a private studio, because then it's like you look, you have to look inward, oh, which 100%. I think there's value to, yeah, yeah. too, in a weird way. Yeah. Like for me, like working in isolation, you know, like because I went from the extreme of working with like all these great artists yeah, and totally. you got Moscow in the corner, yeah, you know, yeah. and he's like tattooing like fucking Method Man or yeah, some yeah. shit, you know, and has these like insane yeah. gallery of paintings. Yeah. And you're like gazing like, over yeah. Sivak to see him, you know, yeah, yeah. it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And then just like snapping my fingers, I'm like in here alone. Yeah. And, but it was like, for me, that was a cool learning process too. Cause it's like, you have to ask yourself these questions oh, sometimes, totally. or find the inspiration within. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like that. I was able to experience both, yeah. you know, it's kind of interesting. Well, and I've got gotten super like 
like kind of addicted to the photography side of things now mm. too. Also another huge inspo coming from Fibs and uh, and so yeah, now it's like like part of it. I mean, obviously it's always like trying your fucking hardest for that client and that tattoo and you know yeah. like everything you you do you want to make it worth it and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's also like in the back of my mind now too. It's like trying to get that photo mm -hmm. and like, try, like how, like, how am I going to present that? You know, it's just like trying to stay up on the social media stuff and like keep uploading yeah. quality content and stuff. So that's like where on the booking side, it's like, you know, there's every now and then where things get a little slow or like, you know, like you get nerd, you know, yeah, you're of like, course. like, like whoa, I normally like, uh, like, I didn't get an email. Dude, like, I went from like, you know, during the pandemic shit, like getting, you know, closing my books and like only opening them twice a year. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. you know, just feeling so like, ah, like I have, you know, this arsenal of backlog of emails Absolutely. and I get to like just cherry pick yeah, them. Yeah yeah. 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 And then it went to like, I'm only three months out, which is like where it used to be. Like that's, that's comfortable, you know, yeah, it's yeah, three yeah, months yeah. out. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to like, my face is like, you know, I can't yeah. get a job. Like, you know, I was like Dude. freaking out for a minute. And so then I'd maybe like stress book a couple things. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden that next month you're getting all these requests and stuff. And now you have maybe like four or five projects that you're like, I wouldn't have done this, yeah. you know, trust like, me. I know <laughs> I got to do this project and yeah. you're drawing the night before angry at yourself. I know life. that I'm in that zone yeah. when I start booking Phoenix tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's like the bane of my existence. Yeah, like right? uh, it's like the, literally the word, like for me, it's like, I a man, it's like, I can't so wrap my head around. And... <laughs> I just, they, they don't make sense to me. They don't exist. There's yeah, no right? reference. Like it's just like the whole thing. I just yeah. hate it, you know? But like I, I yeah, booked a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I book in Phoenixes, I know I'm in that zone. Yeah, you know? 100%. But it sucks because like you said, you book them and then all of a sudden like. like yep. you know. Well, and that's the hard part. There's almost like, <laughs> like I'm like trying to lately like be more like, like read an email. And then like, even if it's like a really good email, not respond to it right away. Like yeah. give myself a few days, like yeah. maybe read it a couple more times. It's like dating like, or something. Yeah, hundred like percent. Because it's like once you commit to it, like, <laughs> like I, I, you know, try really hard to never like back out on something, you know, yeah. like once I've given that person my word yeah, that I'm going to be there and I'm going to do this for yeah, them. For like, sure. like I know for them, it's a big, you know, even, even if it's your worst day of work, that might be their Big, like most important day of the year, yeah. you know, or whatever. And a financial like commitment. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Kinds like they're things. so excited about it. And so like, all, like finding a way to be excited about it, even if it is something maybe you're not as Absolutely. excited about, but also, yeah, trying not to book the stuff that. You're yeah. Not and I, be able I, to I think that's like, on. um, the, the, like you get afforded that luxury when you, you know, are booked or, you totally. know, yeah, find yeah. some success or whatever. It almost like, um, exponentially snowballs in a, in a way, because not, not only now are you like you know, you're getting better, but then because you're picking the things that put you in the best position to be yeah, better, yeah, then like you're getting better requests. And yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that goes the same with like people, like we were talking about before in a way, like the, the more in tune you are with like the type of energy you want to be around, totally. you start like, you know, being confident enough to like cherry pick your friends or like yeah, who yeah. you want to spend your time with. Yeah. And then, you know, because of that, it, you know, snowballs into like you being a better person. And I think it's the same with like your quality of client and yeah. project, you know, a hundred percent. And like the, like you were saying, somebody who has like confident energy and you can start feeling that in emails. Yeah. And if that person is a confident energy, they come in and you can then reciprocate the totally. confidence. And although every now and then you think that's what you're getting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they come in and you're like, what? Like you're like rereading the emails. You're like, yeah, I swear this seemed like a really good thing. Yeah. Did your friend write that? Yeah, email exactly. For you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that gets, you know, interesting always, but so that's cool. So you went, you did go to art school. Yeah. 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 I went to the Milwaukee Institute of art and design. Do you feel like that helps you with like your, I think so now? overall. So like I, I tried to get into tattooing like right away, like, yeah. like 18, like I was getting, I started getting tattooed when I was 17 and, uh, and then, yeah, like, you know, just like little shit and stupid things. Everything's gone now. <laughs> but, but yeah, like I, I just loved it. And I like loved, I've always loved art. Like I, I was like a junior art docent when I was in like grade school. And yeah. Was, so I was like giving tours at the art museum. Okay. Up, so about art history. And you were just like immersed like in art. Yeah. 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 I had this super dope, uh, art teacher, my, my, uh, first or first or second grade, Miss Moore, Jean Moore, shout out to her. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she like right away, like I, I'm sure everything I did sucked, you know, like I, I was a child, but like 
she saw something in me apparently. And she told my parents to kind of like nurture yeah. me being an artist. And so, yeah, they like, she would always sign me up for all these like extra programs outside of school and all this kind of shit for art. Right. Um, and I don't think, you know, like, like I think it, it set something in me to just be super interested and like in obsessed with art. Yeah. I wasn't good at art. Um, like I couldn't, you know, draw, I couldn't paint, like I could I couldn't really do anything. I could maybe like compose images like digitally and things mm -hmm. like that. And that's like really what I got into in like middle school and high school was like a lot of digital art. Photoshop so, and Photoshop stuff. Photoshop and yeah. like uh Illustrator and like I was doing photography and then manipulating images and you know doing all these overlay things and like yeah. then I got into psychedelics and that kind of like started tweaking the direction of it. But like I didn't really learn how to draw until I went to art school. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm really glad like I didn't get into tattooing right at 18 because i think that would have i probably would have gone the like more traditional tattooer route like just like yeah. tattooing to party afterward and like yeah you know just doing what pinterest stuff like anything you, you wouldn't know? have been exposed to like the potential yeah, yeah. i, of I just art. don't think i would have had the ability even yeah um, yeah i mean my freshman year i was in like a figure drawing class and like I was so anxious and nervous and I had done a little in high school, but you know, not anything to this extent. And like, you know, we got this nude model and I'm like trying to draw him. And like, I look over <laughs> at the chick next to me and she's got like, she, like it's perfect. You yeah. know, it's like perfect. She got rendered. every vein on his Yeah, own. exactly. Like it looks like <laughs> yeah. him, you know, and then I'm looking at mine and it feels like it's not as bad, obviously as what I'm going to exaggerate it to, but I feel like I'm making stick figures in comparison, you mm -hmm, know, like, mm -hmm. this doesn't even look like that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I do think it gave, me like a lot of foundation and then i also think it like helped me understand what i wanted to or like at least like a rough genre or direction i wanted to go with my art um and then i also think it gave me the work ethic like i oh, think that's yeah, like yeah. the number some one structure thing behind that came it from it dude like i was obsessed with art all through college and like you know i had plenty of studio mates and shit that like were going to art school and maybe they're super talented, but they were also going to art school because their parents were paying for school and yeah. they had to go to a school mm -hmm. and they were like, this could maybe be cool, you know, like, and so like maybe we had two weeks to make a painting and they did their painting four hours before class, yeah. you know, whereas like I, I really worked hard all of art school. Yeah. Um, so I do think that gave me like, the kind of work ethic that was needed. Going yeah. Toward tattooing. Some structural foundation. Uh, yeah. Cause like maybe. I was even like, I was like, a full-time artist painting and doing murals when I started my apprenticeship. And so I was like commuting three hours a day, working eight or nine hours a day at the apprenticeship, coming home and still needing to make, a, you know, finish paintings and finish shit and murals like to get paid because I wasn't making money at the apprentice, you know? So like, yeah. like I, I think that work ethic definitely uh, really like <clears throat> helped so much going into tattooing so i do i do think if like yeah if i wouldn't have gone to art school and stuff i wouldn't have had that as much yeah um, so. well it's interesting that you say that though because like you know i would meet younger tattoo artists now and like you know tattooing let, let's be honest is co like cool like everyone totally. thinks yeah, it's yeah, totally it's cool it's just so yeah, cool it's stressful as hell and but, it has plenty of things that aren't cool but like, yeah. yeah yeah but i think that's level. the side yeah. that like a few people you know like getting into it don't see like 100%. the how hard somebody works yeah, you know yeah. like i had a younger tattooer to say to me like you know you know, oh, you're able to like buy this or, you know, you have this car, or, like yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, if you knew what I like went through, like, uh, I guess for the lack of a better term, like on the come up, like yeah, yeah. the nights I was working till four in the morning totally. or watching the fucking sunrise yeah, or, yeah. you know, or home fucking crying or, yeah. you know, like whatever, like, you know, just commuting. Or the, like the relationships that fail out of it, like yeah. fail out of your life because of your, yeah. you know, like you're, you're so one track. Like missing like, my grandma's yeah, 85th yeah. birthday party yeah, yeah, or dude. something while my family was like FaceTiming me. You yeah. know, like, yeah, because yeah, I was like, you know, trying to do a 100%. tattoo for free, maybe, you oh, know, dude, just, oh, just man, a post, you know, it's so many free <clears throat> tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, yeah, it's yeah. Great. And, and you and that's like something people don't realize, too, like just to cultivate yeah. your style, like you had to show that work. So 100 oh, percent. People yeah, weren't yeah. going to ask you for like yeah, some acid trip somebody. black yeah, exactly. sleeve when yeah, off yeah, the yeah. jump. Like, yeah. so you had to sell it yeah. essentially. Right. So yeah. you put in that. So much goes into it behind the scenes, yeah. but people just see you, you know, like followers oh, totally, on dude. Instagram. Like, I have traveling. so many clients that are like, you know, they don't draw. They like, they may be doing something else artistically, you know, like, like, you know, some other genre of art, music, class blowing, like, you know, something. 
but they're not actually even maybe doing that seriously. And they're yeah. like, Oh man, like, like, would you ever be down for like another apprentice? Or yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Like I, I, I would love to like tattoo someday if like you're ever open to that or whatever. And I'm just like, like, like I wish, I wish there was a better way to like, sh- like, you know, have other people understand some of yeah. it. Cause like, yeah, dude, it is hard as fuck. And it's like the amount of stress, like, yeah, like, I mean, it's, I think all tattooers that care about what they're doing experience it. Um, but yeah, especially like when I was learning blackout and like even still to this day, dude, like I'll do a huge chunk of black on someone and then they leave and I'm like checking in for the next three days. You yeah. Know, almost always everything's good. Yeah. But like, I'm just like, I care so much. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, like if you do fuck anything up or if you do like, you know, like feel not a hundred percent about a design you did, it's like the distress and the weight that you carry from sure, that. Sure. Like, it's so fucking intense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's wild. Like my, my partner started tattooing maybe about like seven or eight months ago now. Um, and she's like a incredible p- painter and drawer and stuff like before getting into tattooing. Um, and she's also was like incredibly tattooed before even meeting me and stuff. Like she, you know, was tattooed by like, yeah, all the Reaper boys, young heart, like all these like really, really phenomenal artists. Yeah. Um, and to her, it was like still like, she was like, so like excited about, you know, potentially tattooing one day. Yeah. And now she's tattooing and now she like, you know, gets it way more like yeah. before that she was like, she had a full-time career and like, you know, she was working from home and stuff yeah. like in like tech and uh i would come home and she'd be home all day you know and so like i'd come home from work and i you know i'm like banging her head against the wall like, like what the stress fuck is that and all this shit good? And she's yeah. all excited to hang out you yeah, know yeah and now like she's she's getting it too where she's like you know we come home and maybe we're both sitting on the couch starting to prepare for tomorrow's drawings and stuff and it's just silent and like we're both we just both need some time to yeah. like you know like it was a really tough day and it was like nothing yeah. seemed like it worked and like now you're panicking for the next sure. like you know until that client a week later is like everything healed perfect you oh, know yeah. and you're just like i fucking ruined everything like sure. you know, i would like, do I like to quit my job yeah, like i would do like a 12 hour you know like color realism yeah, tattoo yeah, yeah. on like, someone and, yeah and yeah, i just yeah. like picture them like two days from now just, just waking up bleeding with out and, scab like, and yeah. like an infection and then they send you a picture yeah. like a week later like it didn't even peel like yeah, everything's yeah. perfect yeah, perfect and you're yeah, like yeah. yes like yeah. you know but it's still like you almost need a little of that because it kind of keeps you on your toes oh, you know like that's like, like the thing the number one thing that i like it's the love hate of tattooing for mm-hmm. me is it's like i love that i never will have it figured out yeah but i'm like constantly figuring it out at the sure. same time you know it's like um like yeah i've had so many moments where i'm like oh i figured this out and then the next day like humbled again you know it's yes. just like <laughs> it was like it worked so well yesterday i'm using the same machine yeah. the same vo- you know like everything is the same and it's not working now i I, so I, like, I agree with that yeah whereas like painting i feel like you know you can you can continue to create that for yourself but it's like to a certain degree if you find a subject matter and if you use the same medium and the same surface and you know like you figure it out and yeah. you, you can predict it and you can like control it and manipulate it exactly how you want it. Exactly. Whereas like, yeah, tattooing doesn't have, well, there's that. the variables are less like with yeah. tattooing. It's like different skin types. That's what I'm saying. Different like hydration you're levels. On, if you're working on linen. It's linen every single every time. time. You know, yeah. It reacts the same way right. with acrylic or with, you know, and so sure. like, whereas like, yeah, like, you know, even just the same person from a foot to a knee, to a thigh, to a shoulder, you know, it's yeah. like, it's so different. You have a range of variable, variables within the human, like the one, the, the person. one person. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then you get another person and it's yeah. like completely reset. Someone's oilier and, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe they don't drink as much water yeah. or they uh, don't work out or, you know, everything. And they, yeah, yeah. maybe they, they they move a little. Maybe yeah, they're they, covering up stuff that's super raised out of the skin or, yeah, like, or laser removal. Of, yeah, I do a ton of cover up stuff and like that, play, I like, oh, yeah. didn't even realize how much that played into things. So even when you're putting like black over another tattoo, right? Like it, it, that uh, do you matters. notice like it like the tattoo under could raise a little bit uh, while you're doing that it. or like depending on how old it is like you have to be very cautious about how like like maybe you know maybe you have a design almost like this where it's like you know like like solid then break a skin solid break a skin and now you're covering it like if that's kind of on the newer side mm. like you have to be really delicate over the cover yeah but you still have to like fully saturate the empty oh, skin yeah there's like yeah so many variables to it so even um, just black and something yeah, out yeah. and then like yeah if they have color or if they have white highlights mm. like what oh my god so, white is a 
the most difficult thing to cover with it's black. It's because it's so it's opaque, like, I guess. Well, yeah, you like you cover it and it looks perfect. And then right. it heals and it looks perfect. And then like six, seven, eight months, it's perfect. And then like slowly it like creeps back oh, out. Oh, is that right? Dude, like I did like a sleeve. I did two sleeves on like people with like a ton of white highlight stuff throughout their sleeves. And it's like, yeah, they looked good for probably about a year. And then I was like still working on other projects on them. And then like slowly it's like you can like see it again. Yeah. It's like like this dude has all these like outlines like he had you know full color like roses but all the edges of the roses were white were white yeah and he has ro- it looks like a white on black tattoo now wow like it looks like like or my gray on so black is that something tattoo. like yeah, you, yeah. but now if you go over it again like in that like a year later or something will it cover at that point or no we're gonna find yeah. out yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, so we haven't a, tried yet yeah but like yeah like it, it's yeah a lot of variables same with like yellows and like you know like certain like I, green i guess like like high opacity yeah yeah. i I guess colors with a lot of white because at the end of the day like even if like you know in theory you're putting it on top but really you're putting it into the same layer of skin sure and so it's really just pigment mixing. so it's like battling in the skin and then it's like bloop yeah (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, like my leg is like white on black and it's like like it looks almost more like gray and like most people look at it and are so confused Mm. like how it happened or like you know what's going on with it yeah it's like yeah and it almost like mixes in the skin i understand like Like, and over time especially yeah and then yeah then it's so it's just being displayed on the same level yeah exactly essentially yeah yeah yeah. and i think also like certain pigments like that like that yeah are almost more opaque or whatever like yeah like white healing is like chunkier and like yeah it feels thicker well it's the most opaque that yeah i would say yeah and so like it's like I feel like the pigment is like thicker almost. Yeah, and yeah. so maybe you put the black in it, but it's still so much like of that white pigment in that part of the skin. And like, yeah, yeah. so it's a weird. Variable. I wonder if you hit it again, like when it heals or, or like if you do it a couple times over time, it would eventually yeah. like overpower it. You would think, right? Like, yeah, I, mean, yeah, hey, I don't have any out. experience. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been, sh- I shy away from cover ups in yeah. general. I don't know. Just cause my, I mean, totally. I you, mean, I, I would too. With your style, style yeah, lends yeah. to it very well, yeah. obviously. But like with me, it's like, you know, fuck it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, gotta work I, double. Dude, I mean, uh, and that's been another huge inspiration for me working with fibs is like that man is doing these cover up projects that I'm like, like I see the, the start and I see the end product and I'm just like, how like how did you do that like there's this girl at the convention uh who has this like cover-up sleeve from him and it's like you would have never known there was another sleeve she didn't have any laser it was full color yeah and like now it's this heavy like heavy black and like opaque gray kind of sleeve but it's sick as fuck and it's flowers and snakes and like you know it's like no no one looking at that would know that there's a sleeve underneath that sleeve that didn't even have any like laser or yeah you know, probably was only like a few years old realistically so it didn't even have you know like and it's crazy what he was able to achieve and so like that's actually been like making me ballsier mm-hmm. like i've been i've in the last like probably like three or four months i've taken on some cover-ups that i'm like i would have never you know, like normally it was like, if you want to cover up, it's blackout. Yeah. And yeah. then we take the open skin and we can do, do some, something with that. Sure. And now I'm like learning ways to, to just make a whole new designed sleeve. It's obviously got to have a lot of black. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a blackout. It is fun. Like I, I actually, you're, I'm just hearing this. I'm getting like inspired sometimes to do it. Uh, I mean, I feel like I, obviously you have pieces that could lend your, like lend to it yeah. way more. Like well, you have heavier pieces that have a ton of black in them and shit like I that. I love black. Yeah. I almost want to start using it more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think, a, I think slowly everyone's starting to kind of figure that out. Yeah, you're you know? right. Like, especially even in the realism stuff. No, it's like, I like doing half the, tattoo like if say it's like a skull yeah i want half of it to just be black yeah and then like where the light hits yeah. there's like texture or something well it matters yeah. so much too and like like michael talks about that a ton it's like like what it looks like fresh is like cool or whatever but it's like what does it look like five ten years from now that yeah. actually fucking matters and i feel like there's like a bell curve for that in my mind like how, how does it look fresh and then like how does it look in five ten fifteen years and then yeah. it's like at some point, it's like, you're just old now. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, but still, even then, like, you know, like, I think, like, a well-executed tattoo will still look Of course, good, yeah. You know, like, sure. you see, like, Wang Odd, like, the oldest tattooer in the world. Have you, have you heard of her? No. Uh, she's a Filipino woman who's, like, I, 110 I've or something. That, and like, she's still tattooing. Like, yeah, she yeah. started tattooing when she was, like, eight or something. That's crazy, like, yeah. So, like, oldest tattooer on the fucking planet. And she looks badass dude like yeah. she's the tiny old lady and like you know wrinkly and everything I, but her tattoos look sick and on like, her the yeah ones. yeah yeah and even though they're like you know totally different looking than what they looked like you know like 
89 years ago when she sure. got them, like they still look sick and badass. Well, I feel and like I your think, work is like a, probably a perfect example of that. Like, and uh, that's like something I try to focus on so hard. Yeah. Cause when I first started, I was doing a ton of geo and I was like, how intricate can I go? And mm. how many like values can I put in it with blacks and grays and stuff? Yeah. And again, I've only been tattooing a little over like, or like five and a half years now. Yeah. And, uh, and even some of those pieces that I did in those like first year of yeah. tattooing now that I'm looking at, I'm like, okay, like, went way too intricate. Like, that's not going to really, like, it, it'll still probably look like all, like, decently cool, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, it's, like, but, geometric. And but the little shape stuff. within the shape yeah, yeah, probably those, blends those light together. light grays that look sick yeah. that first year, like, all, almost don't even look like they're there anymore. Or even, you know, you know like, I was talking to uh, Ilya Cascade, I'm sure yeah, you know yeah, him, yeah, yeah. And, and he was telling me about, like, because he does the dots, dot mm -hmm. work and stuff, he was explaining to me, like, how you do the dot. So he would like do all this crazy shit. He like modified his machine and like, uh, like he would cut something. I don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. like, he was always tinkering with well, shit. Well, that's also so much that plays into it. And that's something I've like become incredibly obsessed with right now is like machines. Like in the technical. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. Like I taught my, like I, I had a very like, you know, pretty basic, uh, apprenticeship. Like everyone was, I, I had a great apprenticeship in terms of like the energy and the vibe of everyone. Like I, yeah. everyone treated me like with so much respect and you know, I didn't have a shitty apprenticeship by any means, uh, compared to what I've heard of some people, but, but I, I didn't have a lot of knowledge on tattooing itself. You know, I had some basic, like I could watch people in the shop and ask questions and, you know, I started like everyone used rotaries. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just went right into rotaries right off the bat. And I even got like weird at my shop, you know, like everyone was using direct drives and like Bishop and FK irons and stuff like that. And then I got a Dan Cuban and mm. it was like, it was this totally weird new thing, you know? Is that and where I, you're rocking still? I'd use a lot of the Cubans still, but now I'm like obsessed with coils. And oh, I'm wow. Like, yeah, yeah. I've like, like been reaching out to fucking everyone I can possibly on social media that works with coils or tunes coils or builds coils and asking them like every possible question I can, you know, fabricate through Instagram um, and buying coil books from like the nineties and shit and yeah. like reading those all night long and shit. And like, yeah, buying a bunch of machines and just taking them apart and m messing with them constantly. It's kind of cool. Like, I'm obsessed. You dude, can get like, like really like into like the customization. And One, it's made me more obsessed with tech tattooing too it's mm. like the more like i can like understand the tool and i mean it's frustrating as hell too like it's also come with like you know fucking up so many tattoos thinking i'm like oh yeah this is working really good and then it's like comes back healed and it's like that didn't work that yeah yeah it wasn't like it. saturated yeah, as yeah, much yeah. Or it looked something. perfect you know fresh yeah. and then it comes back because now you're lighter. dealing with like the the give and like the, the so many, spring yeah yeah so many variables so, and the it the capacitor yeah. and the way it bogs yeah, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff uh, it's really cool though because it's like it's almost like having an old car yeah, like 100%. and you're like out in your garage like yeah, yeah. wrenching on it yeah and it's funny like fibs gives me so much shit all the time about like my obsession with coils and all that stuff he's like you're going backwards yeah you know like he's all hyped on like the the cheyenne pen he's like oh this is like saving my you know like he used all that shit for years, you know, like fucking with the coils. And but all that's that. like having a Tesla or, or having, like I said, like a car yeah, brum, brum, yeah, like totally. in your garage, yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. clunky, but yeah. like, but it's, and I'm sure someday, you know, I'll probably like, like also, you know, 20 years in, I'll probably want to save my wrists and things like that too. But like, yeah, I don't know. The more I'm, the more I'm like understanding the tools, the more I feel confident while I'm tattooing, the more like obsessed I am with just everything well, around. You're also tattooing. learning how it, like the actual physics of like what the needle does and how it's like 100%. relation to the skin yeah, yeah. which m might even help you like you know the day you do use the rotary machine you have like i've already kind of had that a little bit so like i was like when i first started doing blackout stuff i was using the dan cuban like sidewinders yeah i love that like, i, ha I have one yeah yeah, yeah 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 um and it was great like i felt fast as fuck and like that was what uh when i got my first blackout that's what it was done with and so like i was kind of just mimicking that technique mm -hmm. and it was going really good for a while um, and then I started seeing other people's work that I was working with that was coming back really brutally healed from those machines. And then I got really kind of in my head about not wanting to do that to a, like my client, you know? And so then I started messing with the machine more and like trying to, you know, be gentler with yeah. the technique. Which yeah. Cause you can to, fuck with the stroke on oh, those yeah, you things. You can change a lot. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. similar to coils in like the, uh, the ability to make it run the way it's you want. It's almost it like to. a hybrid. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like an easier coil. It's like yeah. once you, set it up like it'll pretty much lock it stay in. there for as long as it works you i think know? i had the first sidewinder it okay. had like a thing on the back you could twist for like the like the, the way the spring would work yeah, but yeah there was like, like a back spring it would essentially travel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like your stroke and all but you that. could you could change the front with like some nut 
Yeah, yeah. Like how yeah, far yeah. it goes and down. It's got impact screw that you can adjust. Yeah, and then it had the back one, so you, you could you could tune each end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like the range. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is like what like that kind of got me into machines was mm. the Dan Cubans for sure. Um, and I was obsessed with them too. And like I remember, I, I got tattooed by somebody that was like all about coils, and they were trying to kind of like show me why coils are the shit, you know, especially for blackout. And I was all like, nah, these Dan Cubans look cool. You know, like they these do like, look well, like, they're like Ferrari, pieces of art, you know, like they, they are whereas, like to me at the time, like coils were these big, ugly, ancient looking things yeah. that I wanted nothing to do with. And I was scared of, cause I didn't understand them at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then like now that I'm starting to understand them and like, you know, like figuring out how to tune them and adjust them and I'm doing weird shit with them, um, then I'm also ultimately like none of it's mine. I'm copying it from the, you know, other yeah, people. On but the you're taking like it. knowledge that already exists and kind yeah, of yeah. interpreting it yourself. 100%, and kind yeah, yeah. Of how it works for you. Yeah. And so now I feel like, you know, like obsessed with them and I'm like, I want to do everything with a coil. And well, like, I'm wondering, cause like, I, I know you mentioned before how like tattooing itself is something you can become obsessed with, but it's mm-hmm. also like somewhat unconquerable 100%. so it keeps yeah. you kind of and then feel the same. and then machines the same way but <laughs> I, i'm finding like a commonality here and between what you're saying and also like with me and yeah. a lot of other artists i know and you almost wonder if we're just a bunch of lunatics with like severe adhd oh, 100%, and dude, we just yeah. need yeah, unconquerable we're, tasks yeah, we're all addic- <laughs> yeah. like we all have addictive personalities yeah. and we yeah. need something like just a, that's d- good to you know yeah to a degree good yeah um, to be addicted to to feed that addiction exactly and but you and, but also something you can't conquer yeah like something that's like a you know decade long oh, quest 100%. you know yeah because yeah. otherwise you get bored like, yeah and yeah then you get good at too fast it's kind of like oh, right yeah. so i think they find that common denominator between like a lot of us like it's just like yeah. it's just and it's just a quest of like you know and and you could keep pushing it and you oh, could keep learning and then you get humbled and you, you can't you know because if it's like some just take like some video game for example like you get addicted to it but then you beat it like you know and it's yeah. over yeah, yeah, but yeah. you can't beat this game nah. you know what i mean nah, <laughs> like, dude and that's like the funniest thing like i have a couple people that are kind of at like the same place in their career as me you know like they're they're still very very new to tattooing but they're kind of they're they're catching on to something and like you know they have a good community and stuff and like well you know they're out in europe or london or whatever and like we're kind of like both on the coil thing you know and so like i have a couple friends like that that i'm purely instagram friends never met in person but like they see i'm obsessed with the same thing they're obsessing over and like so we're just talking all the time and uh yeah there's this guy daniel out in the uk that i've been chatting with about machines and he was like like, uh, he was like, man, like, like I, I got this book and he like sends me the link to the book. And I was like, oh yeah, I bought that like a couple months ago. And like, like, a, like, he's like, I feel like it really helped me like understand tuning a little bit more, you know? And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I felt that way too. And then I like tried to tune another machine the same way, like the two exact identical machines set up, you know, and like tried to tune it the same. And I, I can't. You yeah. can't get them to be the same, yeah. you know, like but, this one's, this one's my favorite and this one's all right, you know? And it's yeah. just like, and you don't even know why. Yeah, it's just, exactly. It's like, I bent them. Like I, I literally, I'm measuring, I'm cutting things the exact length. I'm bending yeah. things, you know, like the, like the frame came from the same builder at the exact same yeah. dimensions and everything, but this one works better. It could even just be like the frame, like the way it was welded. Yeah. There's some, there could like, be like the geometry is like slightly different. Yeah, or yeah. Maybe it's got like a little more weld on that part or, even fucking knows, or maybe right? even just that like, piece of metal has like yeah. better energy or yeah something, yeah right you know? like that, <laughs> the guy that actually put that one together like was happy and that guy was pissed yeah and, like, yeah somehow that's now fucking my coils maybe up, there right? was like an ancient war fought over where that metal was <laughs> yeah, mined right. like you know like, imagine, like who knows 100 <laughs> percent. but yeah like i think i think it's good to like I don't know, have, and, and obviously like you could have those things outside of tattooing too. And sure. that can also feed into. Well, you see guys do it with like fucking golf or something, yeah, yeah. you know, like it's like yeah. just however it manifests, yeah. you know, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. But, but I find too, like with me and then it's like, as soon as I start getting that like boredness, it's like, well, we're going to paint again, you yeah. know, like, but this time I'm going to do acrylic painting yeah. and that's what I've been on lately. I used to be like oil, oil, oil. Oh, really? Now I'm just like acrylic, you yeah, know, yeah. like, you know? yeah, I feel like your style lends more to acrylic. Me too. Mind. And yeah, I found yeah. that out. I actually yeah. found that out when I was doing that painting, I was trying to get it done quick. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, let me do like the whole thing in acrylic roughly. Yeah. And then I'm going to switch to oil to save a bunch of time. Yeah. And then I just started liking the acrylic. Yeah. I learned, I, was, I learned that at uh, like my probably like sophomore year of college um, I was doing a lot of oil in school and like I think like the the look oil has is unbeatable like mm-hmm. that 
that's that's oil you know sure but like the the workflow that acrylic has was way way more my speed me too you know? like i i you know i was using spray cans and using like you know liquid acrylics and things like that and i just wanted to work fast like i'd have hair dryers to like fucking dry yeah. the shit faster like whereas yeah like no matter how much like gambling oil i fucking put in things like it, it still was too slow with oil well the cool thing is that you could i was thinking about getting into like putting oil over the acrylic totally. like on yeah, the yeah. final layer even yeah, if it's yeah. not like fully saturated but just where yeah. it needs it because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like more luminosity oh, maybe. and the blends that you can get like i mean that's yeah that's the unbeatable part exactly um, i mean i use so much like when i do paint i use so much uh like glazing fluid and like shit like that to just kind of almost try to mimic the layering process oh in uh in uh, acrylic yeah yeah like do you use like retarder and all that stuff yeah mostly the uh what was it it was like golden um yeah, it's like glazing fluid or something like mm. that. I'm, I'm, I'm a little dated on my painting. No, it's all right. I've just been, been using water <laughs> even for glazing. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that could work. <laughs> but uh, but no, I think the like it kind of almost gets like that similar like sheen and then like that see-through la- like, mm. like where you're stacking layers. Oh. Um, like there's this like visionary technique called like the mish, uh, mish technique. And it's like this like glazing technique with acrylic to yeah. create like kind of these like oil aesthetics. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that was like, like, I mean, everything I was doing was just all about layering and sure. if it was purely. And it's cool that you could do it in so many ways. Like, because I was finding that I was like not layering, but yeah. I would just, but that's cause I also do a lot of color realism tattooing. Yeah, so yeah. my brain is already working like, yeah, you already know you want that color there. Yeah. Right? And I make it in my tube yep. and that might be like my, you know, superpower if you yeah, would, yeah. like I could make any color quick, you know? Yeah. So if, if I'm just doing it in my painting, I'm just going to hit it once. Yep. So that's why I actually started relating acrylic painting more to tattooing yeah. than like oil. Whereas yeah. people always say oil is kind of like, like a color realism tattoo. I don't think so because yeah. with acrylic, it's like, cool. I want like this color here to be that color. And I just mix it and hit it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I was listening to one of the other uh, podcasts and I, th- I think you were talking about that. Like, like some people, in the, especially in the realism realm, like have that more like, you know, layered approach yeah. and it's like slowly building up, even though they know that, that they want that edge to be dark. They maybe are starting with light yeah, and then like, maybe they're putting medium. And yeah. then they're eventually put in dark. Like yeah. you were saying, you kind of just, I don't right do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why you're probably so much like, so efficient. Like efficient. I, mean, I, yeah. I remember seeing the pieces that you would bang out and you know, one session, like at the convention or something yeah. like that. And it was like, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's like, I'm ground. treating it like traditional tattooing. Yeah. Like if, if this part like is, even if it's blended out into another color, it's like, yeah. let's just hit that and then soften the edges yeah, and then yeah. put the next color right next to it. And just, yeah. you're making like traditional blends, yeah. but in like odd realism shapes. You man, know what I mean? I was watching James text yesterday oh yeah that oh guy's my sick god, man. dude oh my god like yeah. the most like confidence i've probably ever seen with like color application and whatnot i mean just tattooing in general but like color application without having a reference mm. just like straight out of the mind and he does like, work just from his like imagination as far them? as i could see dude. <laughs> yeah. like he had he had his outline drawing like just black like on you know like just black lines that's yeah. it and then like it was he literally did this entire fucking thigh yesterday like in one day in one day full color like yeah. this giant dragon with this claw and shit like and it was just fucking insane and yeah he's like he's like packing so far like i it didn't even look real like I was like, yeah. I was just, I would go over there probably about every hour and it was like, you know, it seemed like six hours of work was done per every individual hour. And yeah, I was just yeah. like, Jesus Christ. Like, well, it's like, it's, it's interesting. Like, uh, and that's something I've been trying to focus on now is efficiency. Yeah. But I think it's like one of those things, like we talked about before, like you, you're wondering, like, is it going to heal good? And like, yeah, yeah. but once, like, I think the more you minimize that totally. feeling, then yeah. you start like. And again, it's what's unconquerable and so cool about yeah. this. Like, okay, you know, 99% of the time my tattoos are healing great yeah, and yeah. they're coming back great. Yeah. So now it's like I, I expend less energy on that yeah. and you start focusing on like the next step. It's yeah, like yeah. efficiency. How could I do that same thing in half the time but without compromising totally. any of the quality? Yeah, yeah. And that's like something that I've been focusing on a lot now but yeah. also still like then reverting back to like the technical aspects oh, you know it's like yep. it's just, like, yeah, it's just yeah. like this loop of like madness totally and it's like yeah <laughs> like you like you do the you know you try this new needle or this new yeah. ink or this new machine or whatever and it's like it worked so good that day and so now you're like you're telling all your friends like dude you gotta try this needle yeah. you gotta try this yeah. you know like you gotta do it this way and it's like oh my god yeah and then you like three weeks later you're talking to that same homie and you 
t- like you yeah. replace that needle with this other needle yeah. and you're like you got to try this one yeah. dude. and this they're t- the they're one. telling you oh i tried that ink yeah, finally yeah. it's great and you're yeah. like i'm already i already stopped using yeah, it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's another cool thing too because yeah. there's like a, a never-ending cycle of like totally. products as well you can yeah. get involved in it's like which black i'm sure you probably wrestle with like what black to use quite often i've been or, pretty set for yeah. the last couple of years yeah yeah and which, triple x dude so many people are telling yeah. me about this yeah one. and it's funny like uh like a lot of people love it and a way more people hate it um and like won't work with it maybe they tried it once or twice and were like this is awful yeah um, and i think the style like plays into that so much like yeah. if you're trying to sit there and you know do lines and a ton of detail and stuff like that with pin third triple x like you're probably gonna hate it it's yeah. so thick and it like it smears everywhere and it's messy and it's dirty and it's like it's hard to get in the skin sometimes mm. and things like that but I, but especially for big bold black, i mean it's a tribal ink you yeah know? yeah um so but yeah it's like funny because like fibs was also using that on a lot of things and then he went to gods of ink and he he used eclipse and then he came back and he's like dude you got to order this eclipse yeah. stuff and so i ordered a bottle and uh didn't realize i needed to like fill out some paperwork when it was like coming through or whatever and it got sent back to germany so oh I, I never why? because up, it's imported yeah or yeah um so i never ended up like getting the bottle so i haven't tried it myself but i'm still i don't know like i don't I'm, i haven't been like longing to try it like you know i feel yeah. really good about your black yeah yeah like it's, and it's funny though it's like you can have like a fucking three hour podcast probably just discussing black oh, yeah. you know it's like oh, crazy man, yeah. and there's so many di- you know yeah i've been using the intense zuper black okay yeah that's where i started that's um, like glue too man. totally yeah yeah so i used to make my gray washes with it oh and, wow uh, i got a bottle my yeah that like during my apprenticeship that i still have yeah because if they come in like these fucking yeah and like things. and like i only used it for gray wash for forever and i don't i don't use it anymore but um but yeah i was like you know it was like two drops it was like a medium you know it was yeah. like it was it's like thick as thick fuck, yeah, yeah it almost uh, looks like iridescent yeah. on top like yeah. it's like fucking glue yeah. super black <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like it i don't know jacob no, totally. sheffield put yeah, me yeah. on it i've been using it for like three years now probably yeah. since like 20 maybe 2020 yeah so what you do all your black parts with that yeah i just use it for everything as well with it um yeah i think so yeah (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, because that's like like that's something i've gotten a little bit more into is like using liner inks Mm. um and actually actually seeing the difference too like yeah i used to kind of just like be like i I think it all is the same whether it's dynamic talons you know like well liner ink is like black from what i understand and someone told me this years ago and i don't know if it's true that liner ink is actually like a little less than black potentially Mm -hmm. because it's so concentrated in like a point well and that's like if you if you put a line in like you know or if you put black in with a liner and then you put black in next to it with a mag the liner black like it's darker it's dark like the same ink with a liner versus with a mag is darker because it's just so concentrated in in that and it's also like technically like like scarred more Mm -hmm. Uh, like you know obviously even properly done the liner yeah it's more of a scar. it's just like more it's more like concentrated Cut pressure yeah, like yeah. like a, just depositing it yeah. more frequently in like a higher volume yeah right i would say yeah so my understanding of it and i could also be completely wrong this is just you know words i've heard from other people yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> is that like liner ink is actually a smaller particle mm. like the pigment itself it's been is ground smaller. down yeah, yeah it's like finer or whatever yeah and so it sits it's supposed to like kind of like oh a like spread less in yeah. the skin and then b like kind of like be a little lighter than because it's almost compensating for yeah. that like a, for the fact that it's being put in with a line yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. also like with the big thing i noticed like because i use the panthera liner as well and the big thing i notice is just the working experience with it it's mm. like it flows nicely and then when i wipe it's like it's not like it doesn't look black you know yeah, like it's almost yeah. like i can actually wipe it off the skin with one wipe yeah. whereas yeah if i put a you know do anything with the panthera triple x it's like you need some soap and like sure some elbow grease to like actually get yeah it. and the skin's not going to be clean for like a week and a half yeah, you know, yeah it's like yeah. it's like like people will message me like dude i think my bathtub is stained like yeah. you know it's like just yeah. so much so much pigment uh um, but i think that's something people don't talk about a lot too is like the flow yeah you know and i think that that's like i guess important for like black and gray maybe more mm-hmm. or just anything like you know like i almost found myself like bending the cartridge down a little like to ride the plastic a little more or whatever oh, just because like if you're not getting it flowing consistently yeah. then it's like you know when you're trying to do like a blend or like something it, it no totally it, it's very important yeah. i think just like the way it 
drops yeah. like from the like your quill yeah see you know? you're probably you're probably fine with the super black because you're so used to color so exactly like, yeah it's yeah, all yeah. thick and yeah, it's all, all like, yeah, yeah. not flowing and stuff yeah. So, yeah yeah so but sometimes like you're you're right though like sometimes i'll just like if i'm gonna line with it i'll just hit the water yep or i'm even hit the water first yeah, yeah. so i was just like working at guest spot the first couple of days i was out here and uh i didn't fly out here with ink and so i like, went and grabbed a bottle of triple x from a buddy um but I only had that. I didn't have any gray wash. I didn't have any yeah. like liner ink. And so I was like, I pretty much filled up a cap with like topped it off with a little water. And that was yeah. my liner ink. Exactly. And it worked, dude. Yeah, like, it yeah, was, yeah. Like, great. Like, so that's what I would I do. Like, yeah. bet. All right. I can do this yeah. all with one bottle if I have to. You know, like ideally, like in my studio, you know, I have all my different gray wash sets that sure. I'll play with. And, and I have like, you know, all the different brands like Empire and, and Intense and yeah. like Sumi Ink and Panthera and all that shit and Dynamic and whatnot yeah. so yeah i've definitely like played around with them a bunch but yeah i feel i feel pretty good with like the panthera setup um for black and four lines and i've definitely noticed it like i've done pieces where i've lined with panthera panthera triple x and then i put my black up to the edge of it and healed like you see you see the line and you see the black yeah whereas like oh that's also something i've been playing with is like putting that edge in like lighter if i know it's just going to be packed black up oh to, yeah like not yeah, actually yeah. like putting the line yeah in, like, so like even just... over time maybe like that or that would like maybe like you said like not scar but almost like you yeah, could it's like see a little the... like yeah yeah because like otherwise like your edge is like always a little like yeah you know, maybe up. someone's out in the heat or yeah. something or... so then like actually packing that edge once i'm like coming in with the black and the mag like re-putting the edge in kind of yeah. with the mag rather than with the liner so it's all this like one even i see yeah sheet. yeah that's like when you start it's like almost like the like you said, once you kind of grow as an artist, you start like focusing on these nuances that totally. like you, you're like afforded that ability because yeah, you're it's like, like my clients don't notice it. Like, no, yeah, yeah, they yeah. It was yeah. Sick the other way too, but like, yeah, but I, you know, it's I, almost like advanced level shit. Like yeah. I said, like you, you, okay. Like the black is packing. The designs are good. It's like, now we're focusing on like, how am I going to edge this? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, how can I make it as like, just like yeah, seamless yeah. as possible? They're like luxurious things. Like yeah, they're yeah. like the next level of yeah. like, uh, growth you know but that's the obsession like yeah you know, like yeah. i feel like like i don't know like i'm like how do people not have that like feeling you know like no for not, sure like like you're putting this on, on a person that's like gonna walk around with it more or less probably for the rest of their life you know obviously yeah there's always options for change and whatnot <laughs> yeah. but uh, <laughs> very impermanent technically but yeah yeah, yeah it's the like, most impermanent art form yeah, actually. yeah everyone yeah. always like tattoos are permanent oh, yeah. well, well nah, yeah. dude, i've had so many things covered in under a year you know yeah, well, <laughs> like, also every tattoo that that's ever been done will be gone. Oh yeah. Well, unless there's like this preserve. Yeah. 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 (laughs) It was funny at the convention the other day, like, definitely ended up having to like take my sh- shirt off a lot and show things and whatnot. And like, somebody was like, you need to have your skin preserved. Like when you die, like you're a work of art. And I was yeah. like, oh, thank you. But like also probably not going to happen. You yeah. know, like <laughs> ultimately I don't care. Like I, I'm not going to be here. So like, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody, if somebody wants to go for it, like <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. If you want to skin me and hang me in a yeah. fucking museum. Yeah. It seems, <laughs> seems weird in theory. It is weird like, to me. I don't even know how I feel about it. Yeah. I think it's like odd. Yeah. I kind of like, it's I, also kind of cool at the same, you yeah, know, like I, I, yeah. I want to go see that, like, you know, skin museum. It would like, be interesting yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curious about it or whatever. Yeah. I'm curious yeah. about everything. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it just interesting. Yeah. I don't know. They really are doing that too. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that thing. I'm pretty sure there's like a, like a company now that like, mm. does like you can like, like if that's what you want done, like really you can, like, get it you like put it in your will and like that's part of their like i've never investigated it too much but i've seen it's like a thing for sure what like what is the guy called the ink bearer like he comes and like takes you in like a a, a, a fucking reaper yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) he's like got a phone call okay he croaked i'm just gonna go grab his skin real quick like that's it's 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 very interesting i did i did uh, i did see that at a convention one time i think right did you ever see that what like the like the guy was promoting it but i didn't know if it like took off the ground yet or if Uh it was like in it's like startup phase yeah. or whatever you know yeah weird shit for sure yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean it's like the mummies and all that kind of stuff like it's fucking fascinating to see so. yeah so yeah. maybe some people you know like 200 years from now will be like curious to see what we look like yeah in 
you know, this time period or some shit. Yeah, and our tattooing is like ancient. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? Like, imagine where it's going to be 200 years from now. It's like this. We're still here and shit. Like, crazy (laughs) tattoo that we were like, wow. Like, it's kind of like when you were a kid and you want, you were playing like Nintendo 64 and you're like, these graphics are so insane. Like, you know what I mean? I was playing like Wave Race and I remember like the water looked like glistening. And if I look at that shit now, it looks like a cell phone game. My partner and I have been watching all these like old, like, yeah, like rom cons or even like the, like all just all these. Yeah. Old movies, you know, like like 10 years old or something. Yeah. But, you know, like Fast and the Furious or whatever, we were watching that the other day and we're like, I don't remember it being this cheesy, you know? Yeah. But like now looking back, it's like super cheesy, you know? Or like the, like just so unrealistic or like John Wick 1 versus like 4, you know? It's just like the way shit evolves and changes is funny. And I, I think that in tattooing too, it's like, it's almost like, you know, like tribals coming back, you know, like all these things yeah, yeah. that like kind of were like, I'm feeling that like, the tribal thing. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, it's starting to like peak my interest. Like, yeah. just like you said, doing things more like blocky yeah. and like, but maybe we are finding after like a lot, a, uh, There's something to it, a lot of sure. data yeah. that we've collected over like the last 10, 20 years yeah. that like, maybe that is the move, yeah. you know, like, but I how- mean, I, I, I had it kind of just like personally where like, once I started just obsessing over tattoos and styles and things like that, like I would be out and about and I'd see somebody with tattoos and it's like, you know, like you see somebody walk into a restaurant or something like that. And if they're heavily tattooed, depending on like the style they went with and things like that, like maybe it's like you see them, you consciously like comprehend in a really quick moment that they're tattooed and that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. But then you see something that's like, you know, like really eye grabbing and bold and like Mm. large and like, you know, a powerful piece of art. And there's like, there's this different reaction to it. And there's like this different ability to see it from further away and things like that. And so that was like something I started trying to focus on is, and that's like kind of where the tribal stuff kind of came in a little bit. It's like, obviously it's like, I'm not really doing like the, you know, nineties spiky tribal stuff, but, but like taking that same like uh, aesthetic of like wanting to see something from really far away and understand it almost like a mural too. It's like, you know, like, like there's almost this rule of three. It's like, it should look like sick from really far away. Mm -hmm. It should look sick from like medium far away. And then it should also look sick when you're up close and you should have different things that you're getting out of it from like each of those different perspectives and things like that. Um, And then I think that's where like the time timeless aspect comes in. It's like, if you can see it from across the room, like that shit's still going to look pretty cool. Yeah. When they're old because even like, the, if the details dropped out, you still got yeah, that. Yeah. There's still, a, there's a statement being made already. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I started seeing that with like a lot of black and gray tattoos where like sometimes I would see it from far away and I think it's this abstract thing mm-hmm. and I'd get really excited about it. And then I'd get up close and I realized it was like a kind of more basic, like trees, trees and a eagle and you know, like, like it, it wasn't something I'm into, Yeah, but from far away, I'd like thought maybe it was like, something different and weird, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. so kind of like taking that into my practice too. And like being like, ah, oh, like, how can I, like, like, how do I want it to see, like just people to see it and yeah. notice it. And it's almost, th- this conversation is inspiring me. Like I, I've been having this yearning lately and I'm always drawn to work like yours yeah, or yeah. like, it's no, some I, of my I mean, favorite like, work. We talked about wanting to make something together. Like I feel like, yeah two three years ago or something like, like i almost want to yeah. do like something where like you know maybe i have a large subject matter like a skull or something but it's like broken down more simply but yeah. there's still flashes of like the real but you get like weirder with the background yeah, and totally. get blocky or just like yeah. i would love to have someone's arm like a big solid like fade or something you know yeah. and then just like you know what I mean? like i always think of these things and yeah. like i always like see them in my mind but i've like yet oh, to get so them out hard. yeah yeah, 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 yeah I, and I'm that's sure. the other part is it's like until you do it on someone Mm -hmm. or if you can like, and and like, that's like where I struggle so much is like the concept side of things. It's Mm -hmm. like, I have it in my head. Yeah. But like, actually like, like doing it on an iPad is like next to impossible a lot of the times for me. Like I just, I can't make things look the way I draw them and by hand and things like that. Or like the late, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out on the iPads, like how to really do concepts or if that should be done on paper and painted and yeah. then pulled into the iPad to digitally like, you know, but it's, it it's beautiful because instead, like a lot of people think that like a lot of us have it all figured out, yeah. but I'm still wrestling with my process sometimes every day, oh, yeah. you know? Um, but it's, it's just, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. And that's like where like, again, like, like working with fibs, like he's 23 or 24 years into tattooing. And like, he talks about this shit every day. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And I'm like that. I love that. Like, I, I think, I mean, a, that shows me that there's that possibility to do this for 
20, 30, 40 years sure. and still be obsessed and still be excited. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's not like you want to retire. Yeah. Or you want to do something else. Um, but also that there's like, yeah, it's never, it's never going to be figured out. Yeah. And it's never going to be done. And it's like, you just like, there's always more, there's always something else to tweak and like exactly. new ways to approach something. And then when I'm feeling really dry, that's when I, you know, start Switch a up. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, so there's like, if I'm even starting totally. to like in, enjoy that aspect of yeah. like finding something else like within it, you know, yeah. like that, that yeah, is, this also is like come from tattooing, but like also some of them almost have nothing to do with tattooing. And yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's what I want to do with this. I want to start branching out to like even artists that aren't, you know, yeah, tattooers, yeah. like yeah. painters, maybe oh, yeah. musicians, like just interested in speaking with people and like, yeah. you know, and then this helps me with my art and tattooing. Cause then I like spend time having like intimate conversations. Well, with and it's kind of funny too. Cause it's like, I mean, obviously it's like, you know, not all of us, but like most tattooers, you know, like we're pretty decent at talking and yeah. like just shooting the shit. Cause for that's sure. what we do for like eight, nine and 10 hours every day yeah, with our clients yeah. and stuff. And yeah. so it's like, yeah, it was funny. I was telling some people yesterday that I was coming to do this and they're like, Oh nice. Like, and I was like, yeah, like, you know, it's like normally like three hours or so. And they're like, what are you, you going to talk about for three hours? And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. We're both tattooers. Yeah. Like, I'm sure we're going to figure it out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, the interesting thing is I never set out for it to be three hours. Yeah, it yeah. just like sometimes tends to go that yeah, way, yeah. you know, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I did the one guy four hours. I had yeah. to tell him, hey, man, like, you know, yeah, yeah. I got enough. Yeah, I don't like, think anyone's going to watch. Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you watch their attention chart yeah, on like yeah. YouTube. Just go. Yeah, like, you exactly. know? But, you know, it's just like, uh, yeah. And it's funny because you think, like, I had the one girl that came in and she's like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this for 10 minutes. Yeah. And the next thing you know, like, two yeah. and a half hours go yeah. by. You know? Yeah, we can all talk. Yeah, well, it's interesting because we just always have to, like, it's almost part of the gig, right? Yeah. Like, connecting with somebody. Yeah. Or, you I know. get bummed sometimes. I mean, like, all respect to anyone. Everyone's got to get tattooed the way they got to get tattooed, you know? But sometimes I'm bummed when my clients, like, come in and put in headphones. You know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You want? I yeah. like. That. I'm a yeah, social like, butterfly. I might work more efficiently or something. You know that yeah, day, and yeah, I'm like, oh, I sure. did really get a lot done today without the, like talking and stuff. But like, yeah, maybe the day felt a little longer, or like I just didn't have that like personal connection with them. And yeah, I like that. Like I crave that. Me and too. I, yeah, and I also think it kind of like has made my social life kind of a little different. You know, like I don't crave. Like I don't hang out with my homies like all the time. You know? Yeah, it's like pretty like select, and it's like um, because like yeah, after a day of work, like I'm pretty I'm well, pretty good like socially. You know, like, yeah. I just want to go home and hang with my girlfriend and like the dog and like draw and yeah, watch a movie or something. No, like, we do have that. Yeah. Like uh, like even if even me working alone, say like yeah. you know I still had a great social interaction with totally. my clients. So yeah, there's yeah. like always like. You know, yeah. you're never like alone if no. you would, you know, yeah, yeah. and that's the interesting thing about tattooing as opposed to like painting or whatever, yeah. you know, you're, you're doing it potentially while being social. Yeah. I'm not a head, like I'm not a headphone guy. I've never worked with headphones. Uh -huh. I actually can't, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not yeah. my thing. I know some, and some that was like, like honestly, it. like something, yeah, that like, I think even made tattooing like that much more special for me or whatever, like coming from a painting background was like, yeah, dude, I spent, I mean, I, I painted late most of the time so like i would be in my studio for maybe like 7 or 8 p.m until like 7 or 8 a.m yeah oh yeah i know um, about that so like i didn't be sleeping until you know like 2 or 3 p.m you know it's yeah. just like a not healthy lifestyle all sure. in all um like never seen the sun or anything but then mm -hmm. also like yeah dude like i was just by myself all the time yeah um and i didn't hate it at the time no I it has even, value i didn't even realize that i didn't like there was things about it that i didn't like until i started tattooing and like having that like one-on-one -on -one interaction with people through art still you know like yeah because like i felt like that's kind of like like once you finally were painting a mural in a public setting it had that element or like uh, art your art show once or twice a year you know in a gallery finally had that like human interaction yeah. and that like you know like you're you're both connecting over this thing you created or whatever um but yeah once i started tattooing i was like obsessed with that i was like whoa yeah. like i can like like through art i can have genuine connections with people and that was like all that art kind of i felt like ever really was for me in the first place mm -hmm. it was like it was like how can we like connect without necessarily having to use words and stuff and that sure. was like painting and it was like you know a lot of my stuff was super inspired by like psychedelics and and so it was kind of coming from this place of like i can't really tell you about it but i could maybe show you sure something it's like close beyond to it. words yeah yeah and then like, yeah, once I started tattooing, it was just like so much like connection with people and it felt like really, really good. And then like, obviously, yeah, even better if they leave happy, 
you know, with this thing that you put on their body. And even better if like four or five years down the road, they reach out and they're like, yo, like I still fucking love this. And you know, like, yeah. like you, you put a mark on them that like still sticks with them. Like maybe not even like the tattoo itself, but the experience was the mark. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I love that. So let's talk more about that. You said psychedelics had a big influence okay. on your art. Uh, like when and how did you start? That um, get into so I, I grew up with like two older brothers, so I've always been the, the baby and I didn't really have like anyone even in my family, like cousins or anything that were like lower than me on that totem pole. Mm -hmm. um, so Same, I felt like I was, me. yeah, I was always like trying to be older and trying to be cooler, you know, like Same here. I was the, I was the baby like, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like finally, like, you know, later in life I have some like, you know, like really really distant like second third kind of ish cousins that are younger than me and i finally got to have like a little bit of that like mentor role or whatever yeah, with them. yeah but yeah. yeah for forever it was like me being the bottom of the totem pole trying to like you know be cool enough to hang out with my brother's friends that day and not like you know then bitch to my mom to like make me stay home or something like that and so um yeah i got into all that stuff like really young um which like you know maybe on one hand like isn't good but like also i i like I don't know. I don't regret any of it. Um, so I started doing psychedelics like in high school. Um, yeah, probably like my sophomore year of high school. What kind of psychedelics? Uh, I started with mushrooms and then DMT was like the, like almost immediate, like I had one mushroom trip and then mm -hmm. I did DMT. Damn. Yeah. And it like, that changed everything for me. Like, How was, so? Like, uh, so I was like, I don't know. I was maybe like borderline religious. Like I was raised uh, religious and stuff. And I went to like a private like Catholic school for high school and stuff. And like I had a pretty like intense experience with my grandpa dying when I was younger where like, I, I don't know, like it felt like it felt like it, it like religion made it make sense for me at the time. Um, and then I had my first DMT trip like kind of showed me that experience again. Uh, but like showed me a different light of that experience or a different perspective of it and kind of like took the religious aspect out and kind of like showed me more just like the energetic aspect mm -hmm. of life and like um, like the, just like consciousness as like a creator rather than like this, you know, like defined anything more yeah. or less. So like, yeah, it, it, I'd say it like switched me from thinking I knew anything to like realizing I don't really know much. And like, that's maybe, and that better, was like maybe knowing everything in a way. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, like it's yeah. just way, e it's a easier, uh, reality in my opinion, like to just be open to everything. Sure. And like, yeah. you know, like, like nothing's super off limits or like, uh, not a possibility or something like that. But, um, yeah, so it was like DMT and that also completely changed my art style. Like, and that was kind of like the dude that gave it to me was one of my brother's good friends. And he was just like, yeah, dude, like I didn't even know what it was. Um, he was like, you, you need to try this. And like, I think that was also the perfect way to go into it. Having no understanding, yeah. like, just being super open. Yeah, and like, also you didn't have a confident. preconceived, like yeah, there was yeah, no yeah. preconceived notion of like what this even was. Yeah. And this, this, uh, homie of my brother's like, he, you know, my brother talked him up and put him on a pedestal of like being a very safe individual to, you know, take substances from and everything. Right. Like, right. He, I mean, he was like a uh, Hunter Thompson in a sense, like, you know, try, yeah. like dude carried around this bag of goodies <laughs> everywhere he went and like he tried everything, you know, and like yeah. went the fullest, farthest possible. And he was like a cool guy. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. And he was an artist as well. And so like he kind of gave it to me as like this. I think this is going to like do something for Unlock you. Unlock some shit. Yeah, yeah. And it did for sure. And I was obsessed with it. And like, you know, a lot of people have a lot of like fear and stuff about it. And I, I love that shit. Like it, it <laughs> feels so good to me. Was there like almost like a little bit of like um like a death of like it, it almost sounds to me like like a death of like the ego or labels or a lot of those things because again like dude I was like a sophomore in high school so like honestly like prior to prior to like probably my sophomore year of high school and maybe even a little further than that like junior year or something like I was an asshole like I was like super sporty and kind of yeah. you know I I, I kind of always like existed in these two different sides like I was like super into art and I hung out with the weird kids you know that were into the art and shit but then I was also like on all the sports teams and yeah. I was like a good athlete and I was like popular in school we have like, like very similarities you know, because I, like, I was the same way yeah I was like always like kind of like fluid between groups yeah, I played yeah. sports Sports, but yeah. I also like like metal and had long totally. hair and skateboarded. Yeah, but yeah. then would like cut yeah, my I hair. I was like going back and, and like, forth and like I, you know, but yeah. also good at sports. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like I kind of had some of that. Like I mean, I, like yeah, everyone has it. But like I had a lot of the ego um, in like middle school and grade school and and high school. And like I look back at some of those things. And I'm like, man, like I, 
I wish I could like <laughs> go back and maybe like, obviously like, you know, being content with where I'm at now, like it all happened for a it's reason. It's like part of the whatever. story. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. like, yeah, I feel really bad about some of the, you know, just things I did as a like younger kid to be cool or what, you know, well, like putting people down and things like that. And I was super judgmental and like all that. And I think that like that, that year, that like, you know, sophomore year of really like, like doing ecstasy, mushrooms, acid, uh, DMT, like it just, it showed me like so many other possibilities yeah. of like how I could be. And like, yeah, I mean, ecstasy, I think was like the biggest personality shift for so me. So I, I, I'm glad you bring that up because it's something that I started dabbling with more recently, yeah. like just pure MDMA. Yeah, dude. And I, I feel like, and I feel like it's an often misused uh, totally. substance. Yeah, yeah. Like it's I don't, party drugs, I don't, so. but for me, it's not yeah, like, yeah. I don't view it that way. Yeah. I think it's like a, a, it's showing you like life beyond your ego, beyond yeah. your walls. And there's like a lesson to take from that, like after it's over, yeah. I, I do think. Yeah. So I kind of started with everything almost more in a party realm, like it had so like yeah like my brother's friends were kind of like the group that i was like with and that was like my middle brother alex and uh and yeah like just all of his friends were like very like good people like good energy and they cared about each other and looked out for each other so it was always like taking substances to party but it was also like party like i don't know like not an abusive way yeah. and like like you know they they taught me a lot of like really good rules almost to have like i didn't do nose drugs you know like yeah I, yeah there was like there was like <laughs> certain like you know like kind of like things laid out for me that i think were super crucial and helpful but the lessons were like inevitable like gone off the deep end you know um but yeah like with mdma specifically like the first rave i ever went to was this like small ass little rave at, it's in milwaukee called the miramar mm -hmm. and uh it's like this tiny little theater and it's all like bass music at the time and shit and i was like yeah like 15 and i went in with all my brother's friends and they're all like you know got candy and like all these rainbow so colors they have the, and the, shit. The, the, the baby the pacifiers. Thing, the baby, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was probably one or two of those in there but yeah <laughs> i like walk in and like you know it's pretty small there's not really that many people and people are like dancing all weird and yeah. hugging each other and all this stuff you know and i was just like you know i'm a high school kid and i'm like you know worried about being cool and how people look sure. at me and stuff and i was just like no way am i gonna dance like that you know yeah. like like no way am i gonna have fun here or anything like that like everyone's so weird and all yeah. this stuff and then my brother's friend gave me some ecstasy and, and that then, all like, changed 20 minutes later i was dancing weird and i didn't give a fuck yeah and I was, yeah like, that's hugging what I'm people yeah. and i was like making genuine connections with people that otherwise i probably would have just judged i and, agree like, man not been open to yeah and like literally that night, I remember laying in bed, like trying to fall asleep, which didn't really work too well, but <laughs> just like a lot of thoughts and a lot of thinking. And I was like, you know, like I had such a good night. Yeah. And it was ultimately just because I was like opened up and yeah, like not yeah. being closed off and like not being judgmental. And I was like, you know, like how can I try to like maybe exactly. implement this? Maybe even like, if I could implement half of this. Dude, literally. And yeah. of course, like, I mean, like, you know by no means do I got it figured out or am I like no, no. close to, you know, like doing that all the time or whatever. Like there's always judgment running and shit, but like, yeah, like I do, I mean, I genuinely remember like a homie of mine, like a week or so later being like, you seem different, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And I just like was kinder to people and I sure. like genuinely like tried to not be a dick all the time. You like borrowed like, something from that yeah, experience. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what I found with myself. Like I even had friends here and we did it. And yeah. they had never done it before. And, and they were telling me like the same thing, like texting me like the next day, like, yeah. or two days later when they were back home, yeah. like, I don't know, man. Like, I think I'm going to change like, some things that was in my the life. First, I, yeah. I, I can honestly say, like, I felt like that was the first moment in my life that I like had a, a moment of being judgment free. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I was like, that feels so much better. Like, uh, well, it's interesting. Cause like it, the, the judgment and all that stuff is the ego. Right. Yeah, yeah. But it's like at the same token, the ego is what keeps you like technically safe. Yeah, yeah. It keeps you alive, you know, it keeps you protected. Right. Yeah. But like, it's sometimes, you know, obviously it doesn't serve you, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you get this glimpse into well, like, it, it does and it doesn't, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, like you and Mike were talking about that too. And it's like, obviously, yeah, like you can't ever check out of it or anything right. like that. It's like the uh, human condition. Yeah. You know? It's like the same reason that like monks devote their entire life to doing the same thing every day and they're still doing it, you know, like, you know, yeah. like they don't ever like reach it yeah, essentially, exactly. you know, and, like and we can relate practice. that to tattooing yeah, you know? yeah. and there it's like, Forever. you can circle that back, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like uh, unconquerable, but this journey that keeps you engaged, yeah. you know, and that's like the same with like, I guess, self work, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I definitely feel like, yeah, like psychedelics changed me a lot as a person. Um, but then, yeah, from a, from an art perspective, it was like, 
like, I don't know. I was always interested in like abstract stuff because it was less definable. Like I, you know, I understand it way more now. And like, I even like in my own art practice started to apply some more like realistic elements toward the end of like college and like after college and my paintings and stuff like bringing in elements of figure or animal or things like that. But for a long time, yeah, I like didn't understand why people were even interested in like making art w out of something that existed already. You know, right. it's like, well, like, you know, like to do a still life painting, it's like, well, it's already there. Mm. Obviously, like so much, like I, I learned through doing still life paintings, like so much changes when you paint it. And also, you, you when you understand of how, things yeah. changes too, and like yeah. light, and like, you know, like there. It's almost like you're learning the rules before you break them yeah, in yeah, a way. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that might, I mean, I don't know. I'm not yeah, so that. maybe I actually was the opposite way. Maybe I was like breaking the rules first, and then I was like, wait yeah. a minute, I need to learn something. It's probably else. like the natural rebellion yeah, that yeah. many of us do have, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like, I think, um, I think that like, you know, with the psychedelic like side of things that like, that was what I wanted to create was I wanted to create stuff that like I was experiencing that like I would come out of the trip and like, especially with DMT, it was like so fleeting. And it was like, I could maybe like hold on to these like random moments of the imagery that I saw, but I can't like trying to explain it to you is not even going to like yeah. scratch the surface of an understanding. I you get know? that. Yeah. Um, and so, like, yeah, I think that's, like, kind of where it played into, the, like, my art artistically was, like, trying to, like, create things that would kind of, like, give a glimpse into this experience that I had just so that then, like, my homie could also look at it and maybe be like, oh, dude, yeah, I had, like, a similar thing, you know, like, and that's, like, visionary art, you know, it's sure. like, like, we're all, like, more or less doing the exact same thing. But like we all had this like tiny little difference or element, but then like your homie sees it and they're like, oh, dude, I've been there. Like, yeah. 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 Like I've seen that exact same thing or something like that. Let me ask you this because you had said before you had like older brothers mm -hmm. and like all that stuff and they were like maybe inspirational or yeah, you're trying time. to be cool to yeah, like yeah. maybe gain their approval or, or maybe. But I, I know having a similar experience, like being the younger one and you're always trying to like be like play up a little because yeah, you have yeah. like the older, cooler, you know, do you feel like before you did psychedelics that you would sometimes make art? with the like from your maybe an egoic perspective like for the approval uh of somebody like did you ever have that experience like i feel like honestly like pre-psychedelics my art was more like i don't know like more almost just like graphic uh like i don't know like i did a lot like i was super into cars and uh like kind of the european like car scene and mm -hmm. stuff oh I feel yeah like all we the, talked about this yeah, before you volkswagen and, and, and all that stuff. yeah i still have the golf r yeah, outside yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah so like i i was super into that stuff so i was like honestly just doing a lot with like photography and like manipulating images to make the cars look cooler and like yeah. the backgrounds look cooler and things like that and try to almost like it was like very much so like a commodity it was like how can i sell this to yeah. somebody and that's what i mean like you're, you're almost it. making it from a yeah, perspective yeah, yeah. like not so much from like your own experience nah, yeah, yeah. it's like hey if somebody's gonna like this yeah like because i know that's that been mattered. with me yeah, yeah. yeah. Just i still like struggle that. with that sometimes. yeah and that's, that's that's i think that's like i was just gonna say the same thing it's like now it's like intentional but at the end the most important thing to some degree is that it still is also like it still has to look good yeah or like yeah. be attractive to someone you know like exactly. it doesn't maybe need to be attractive to as many people as they wanted before like it's just needs, yeah it's really like that person because i would fall into that trap like yeah. making this painting like in my head i'm thinking about like how will this be received yeah so i sometimes try to like make that shift to more like yeah. this is just what like the the most important person to receive it is like maybe me yeah 100 you know yeah, yeah. Uh, I, had, I struggled with that with instagram for the longest time yeah like, yeah i feel like i'm actually like finally kind of at, at a pretty good place with that relationship but yeah i would like post and if that post didn't do well like yeah i felt differently now about that piece of art yeah whereas like prior to me posting it like that was that was the the one you know that was like the best thing 100%. i've done in my entire existence and then yeah. i posted and it got like 30 likes like looking no for comments. external approval yeah, yeah and then i would take it off my feet because it like didn't yeah. do well or whatever i used to do that and too then, like, i don't the, now and then the instagram ha hide like option came yeah and now i just post immediately hide the likes and i don't give a fuck and it's yeah, like yeah, some yeah. of them up there like genuinely maybe have like 60 likes yeah no comment but yeah that's like that one's my favorite one i've done still so i'm fuck it like yeah like as long as somebody can come by and see it that's all that matters yeah uh, but it, yeah that was like a tough tough one for a long time yeah yeah i asked because i thing. went through the same yeah. kind of thing like just even even just like not even on social media but just in my own mind like i'm doing this painting and i'm like thinking about why yeah and a lot of the times it's like 
well, so people like it. Yep. And then I was like, am I doing this? Like, I don't want to say for the wrong reasons, because yeah. maybe those kind of reasons are like a driving force ultimately totally. behind like a lot of people's yeah, works yeah. of art, you know, or even music or That's like our history too. Like going yeah. back, like, yeah, true. Like, but like back in like the Roman days and shit, yeah, like dude, fucking it was like, like all about approval. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like for Kings and Queens. Yeah. And you might get beheaded and, if it yeah, wasn't exactly. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like <laughs> so I think like, yeah. And I think that's like style too. You know, it's like, you gotta, you have to like, like the visual that you're creating or otherwise, you know, like otherwise, why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes, like, I guess to kind of go to the psychedelics, like what you were talking about, that it, it almost feels to me like style itself is a creation of, like, knowing yourself. And I've said that, like, a hundred times, and some people think I'm crazy, but it's almost like how can you truly have a style when you don't know something about yourself, yeah. right? Like, so maybe, like, that couldn't go back to the psychedelic point. Like, you found something and locked in you, so then, like, you're more comfortable or in acceptance of, like, what? you like and then it totally. shows in your art yeah, you know yeah. whereas like if you're lost and confused and stressed or whatever maybe it's like harder to tap into totally. like your true i mean yeah you got to have like a like driving force or something you know to even want to do it like there's got to be like something that's like making you be like excited about doing it or whatever and that could yeah. be a million other things like like in a sense like with psychedelics that was the driving force for a long time now that's like not at all the drive you know like uh, like that's not really driving anything that I'm doing artistically with tattooing. Like if anything, it's more like inspiration from other tattooers and like other pieces I've seen that like really like, like had an impact on me or even experiences I've had getting tattooed that yeah. then like are like navig almost kind of like directing the, the direction my work's going in. Um, and yeah, just like also like trying to try to find something that feels consistent, but a little different and yeah. like, yeah, I feel like it's like a blender of yeah life experiences and other art you've seen and spit out in the way yeah. that you like it. It's just a culmination of like so many different experiences. Yeah. And that's why I think like uh, in any endeavor, like time and experience is so yeah, important yeah. and it's something you can't buy or yep. you can't really like bypass, you nope. know, like, you know, you'll, you'll have a young tattoo artist talking about like, oh, I want to develop my style. And it's yeah. kind of like, just do it, like not just mm -hmm. make your style, but just just move forward yeah, yeah. and like it's like you you, you how can you know like yep. have you traveled enough have you been tattooed by enough people have you yeah. been in good experiences shit experiences have you have you went to a rave and did mdma yep. like sometimes it's just like living you know go, no, maybe totally. going on a hike and like you know you're you know looking yeah, at we were wood. talking earlier about <laughs> like, like yeah just kind of like you know having those high points and those low points yeah. with like inspiration and creativity and just like wanting to work versus like just feeling not good about what you're doing with your work or whatever and that's kind of where i was at like prior to going out to europe and then like seeing like i mean i think just taking time off and like going on a trip and like seeing yeah. these new places and seeing all this art and then like experiencing tattooers that tattoo in a very different way than like what I was used to and things like that. I came back like motivated as fuck. Yeah. And I was yeah. Like, you know, super inspired. And now I've kind of been riding that high. Yeah. Um, and I'm going back out to Europe in October. So I feel like it's almost like you find like perfect sparks. timing, you know, it's yeah. like it's maybe been a little too long and it's starting to like dwindle mm -hmm. a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So I like go hit it again. When I like, went to Ukraine and uh, saw Dimitri Samoh and I did that like skull back there, yeah, yeah. like the, the oil one. And I just did it because like, you know, I saw all his paintings in his studio. So I yeah. came home and I was like, oh, and like you said, you ride that wave. Totally. Yeah, it's yeah. like surfing, right? Yeah. And it's like the wave kind of gives out and then you got to like paddle back yeah. out there. And it's just like this never ending like cycle of yep. like finding new inspiration. Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's good shit. <laughs> yeah. Want to take a break real quick? I got to run to the bathroom. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we're back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what we were saying. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking about DMT again. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Well, you just told a really good DMT story off air, but <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean like in general with DMT, that's like my favorite substance, man. Like it's just like, I don't know. It's so weird and so like intense, but like, I love that it's 10 minutes. And it's like, yeah, no matter what happens there, like you can't overdose, you can't like yeah. permanently mess up, you know, it's like, it's so safe in the grand scheme of like yeah. very powerful substances. Sure. Sure. Um, and it's so short that like something about that gives me this like just intense confidence going in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so it's even like, if it's a bad time, but yeah, I've had, I've had really like, like, you know, quote unquote bad times on it you know but like, it's probably good ultimately yeah, right? yeah yeah totally like there was a lot while where i was doing it like way too much mm -hmm. um like like multiple times a week or whatever and yeah at a certain point like i got yelled at like 
like DMT was like, you're not like welcome here anymore. Mm, like, mm, and like mm. it was this super like intense experience. And like they had gotten like kind of progressively weirder the more I was doing it and tapping into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, like it went from just always being like awe inspiring and like just beautiful and like everything was positive. Then it started getting weird and then it started getting negative. And then it like yelled at me and was like, <laughs> you're not allowed here anymore, which was like, terrifying and like so intense that i like put it away and was like yeah. i'm done with this you know um and that was probably like three or four years of not doing it and oh then okay, i like, yeah. tried it again and it was like this like welcome party and it was like they were like ah, oh, like welcome home like yeah. look over here look over here like, like yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. this you know way way better experience and now i have like a just better relationship with it it's like yeah you know a few times a year or something like sure, that, that sure. I really am doing it. You like but, matured in your youth. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and it's like, you know, I would do it sometimes in like a festival setting or like at a show or like, you know, at the campground with a bunch of people or like at a party, at like a house party. I'm just like sitting on the couch like, Arr. but <laughs> now it's like, yeah, like much more like a, like it's like a ritual, you know? It's yeah, like a very yeah. like respect, like I have so much respect for the substance and for what it does. Like it feels like this like, alive thing. It's kind of like cool though. Of like government itself like it it like forced you that respect oh, yeah. and i have a couple other homies that are like kind of had a similar experience with yeah. it, where it was like they're like we're doing too much and then it was like You're it not. lets you know yeah like, yeah it's like stop that's cool and, like if you don't listen to it it gets worse you know yeah, so yeah. it's like yeah, yeah it's like yeah it, like governs itself yeah, yeah. let me ask you after that like 10 minute trip is it just like over or it like fizzles away uh it definitely is like a fizzle kind of thing and it's it's different too depending on how you do it and like nowadays there's like the cartridges yeah and heard the pens that. and stuff which like are cool and like they're nice from a perspective of like they're easier to like do because it's actually like a pretty difficult substance to properly do mm -hmm. um, it's like typically like a powder or like a waxy substance and yeah if you're smoking it you're either like your ways of smoking it or like putting it in a joint or like on a cigarette or like putting it in like a bowl with like ash or weed and smoking it that way or like a bong or like dabbing it or like the best method honestly is like a crack pipe yeah is, yeah, you know, yeah nobody wants one of those laying around <laughs> um, we they used to have those things in the gas stations by us it was like a little literally. rose you yeah. know those things yeah yeah dude yeah yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. so that you're only using the the substance itself and not like you know like mixing it, mixing with like, it. Yeah, 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 with like some other high that also will be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I in my experience, like pretty much with all the different ways of doing it, like you might get to different places depending on like your form of intake. But yeah, the the end is pretty similar. It's like you come out of it and like things are still kind of like it's almost like a mushroom or pretty intense like lsd trip for a few minutes afterward like yeah, visually yeah. like things are still little, but you're like, kind of here yeah yeah you're definitely like back you know and then uh but yeah i mean the first time i like smoked one of my brothers up on it my oldest brother like didn't really get into psychedelics as much until later and like yeah the first time he did it was like christmas morning <laughs> like maybe like a fucking half hour before we sat down at the dinner or like brunch table yeah. with like my family you know and he was like totally normal by just time. happy you know like yeah. a little extra like woo well, and he just like, went through some you know, everyone's shit like why are you so happy it's like it's christmas you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah yeah so like you you know you can get back and like drive car. You, you can do life and whatnot yeah like shortly after i like about it because like yeah i don't got 12 hours most days dude. yeah yeah i can go down the rabbit hole of an else which sometimes even could be longer than 12 hours you know like well speaking LSD of time stuff, would you like, do uh, ayahuasca ever um, it used to be something I was like super, super wanting to do and yeah. whatnot. And I've had, I have a lot of friends that have gone and done it, uh, in like Costa Rica or Peru or Brazil and like, you know, have very, very like, like spoken very highly of their experiences. Um, but I don't know, like at this point, like I, I don't feel as called to it. Yeah. Um, I'm like pretty content with my, <laughs> my DMT experiences every yeah, now yeah. and then. And like, it's so chill in comparison to what you're getting into with ayahuasca. Like with ayahuasca, you're essentially like spreading out and extending that DMT trip over like, you know, four or five or six hours. So it might be the um, same like trip in a way, but uh, much deeper and longer. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've never done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my, my homies that have done it really hard are actually a little bit more hesitant with the DMT where, it, you know, it's like kind of this, we're like on opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 this is, this is great. Like, you know, it's like super chill and whatnot. Like in 
theory. Um, and they're like, ah, like they're like really hesitant of it. And probably because of the intensity that they've gone through with ayahuasca, you know, it's like a similar door being opened, but, but yeah, with ayahuasca, you got like, you're purging, you're in the fucking, like, if you're doing it right, you're in the jungle, you're like, dude doesn't speak English, you know, like there's like so many other variables that yeah. play. Like, bro, I'd be like fucking nervous being in the, in the Amazon yeah, sober for any like just the, you know like yeah the fact that like all a, the right gear on and yeah. thing I feel like oh I'm gonna fucking get bit by this Snake. mosquito yeah that's gonna like fucking anything yeah. make my arm blow off or you know yeah just, yeah like, all yeah. these crazy things like I'm I'm such a baby about like yeah like insects and like no snakes and kind of rightfully so <laughs> like they terrify me I remember dude, when like, I was in like <laughs> the jungle in Costa Rica and I was like walking through some like bushy trail and shit and then I realized like wait this is where they film animal planet yeah, yeah. like this you know yeah, this yeah, yeah. it's not like I'm not in upstate New York no. you know like maybe there's some black bear like yeah. sparsely you know but like no like this is like where that like yeah, little yeah. frog is that yeah, like dude. you know like yeah, I'm from fucking Wisconsin so it's yeah. like we got like barely anything that can really fuck with you and then like yeah like i'm like terrified of sharks and like, yeah terrified of like pretty much anything in the ocean like i'm fascinated by the ocean like yeah fucking super epic that's going on in there but like i don't belong in it you know yeah. <laughs> no like, i was yeah. i was snorkeling in costa rica and i was out far and it was like getting dark out and the oh, water was murky that. no and then i and then it, I, I was just like oh i'm out snorkeling and then i like i, I had <laughs> it this dawned on you. it dawned on me dude yeah. and i like swam in so fast oh, yeah, dude. There's and a... i was like there's like real shit out here. yeah, like, yeah. it's not like a joke yeah. like yeah and then it's like on the other end of that spectrum it's like you know, statistically, it's like this, like so fucking safe. Like you're more likely yeah. to get struck by lightning. I heard it's that, like, like uh, you know, vending machine, uh, pe more people die from vending machines, like than yeah, sharks. I believe it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But no matter how many of those facts I know, the moment the the idea of me having to get in the ocean is yeah. like a right. Like I'm planned a trip to go somewhere where yeah. there's the ocean. I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Yeah. Oh fuck, like. Like, yeah. like my homies are going to want me to go in the water. You yeah, know, like, yeah. like my family went on a trip to like uh, Turks and Caicos. It's yeah. like beautiful as fuck. And like the water is so shallow and it's yeah. like crystal clear. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. you can walk out for like, you know, three miles. Really, yeah, yeah. Like chest yeah. deep or something. And still I was like terrified. See, I like water. that. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fish. I'm a Pisces. And I'm, Same. I'm, I'm, are you yeah, a Pisces? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a water guy though, even just like. You know, seeing I'm great. Like I, I fucking love swimming. Yeah, and yeah. Like pools and like all yeah, that shit. Yeah, like, I always like even being, in, the being water. in natural water is like yeah. feels so much better. Like yeah. I do a lot of like the like ice water cold shit like up in Colorado and like the yeah. rivers and stuff. And I fucking love. I got dude. the like, springs feel, and all that. Yeah, shit. yeah. It feels so so good. But I don't. There's not like a shark mm -hmm. in those waters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and even yeah. sometimes when I'm sitting in the creek and I'm like, you know, it's like like not deep at all and i'm like you know sitting on rocks and shit i'm like low-key like also like what if there's like a water moccasins you know or, just something that's yeah. like gonna like crawl into me or like yeah. you know like I'm, I'm if, i really that. felt that in costa rica man I bet, because dude. the water's not like blue either yeah it's like it was like murky green. and green yeah, like yeah. and then there's like freshwater fucking alligators potentially and there, shit. yeah like yeah fucking, there's like real shit yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah and of course social media doesn't help with that because i'll like be yeah. on instagram i'm fast fascinated by that shit so Same, i watch yeah. you know all the animal stuff and well i like, looked up attacks on that beach it was actually it was there i think it was, it was michael perry's wedding yeah, yeah, yeah and that's when i went when we were in tamarindo which i actually took a venture out to like another more remote place but okay. that's where i got freaked out by yeah. the shark but with the uh in tamarindo the, the river flows right into the ocean there and it's okay. like it creates like brackish water yeah, yeah and all the alligators like and i've seen them like you can go look at them and they're not yeah, they far can, like swim into the ocean too but right? you're only like a couple hundred yards from the mouth yeah and like some of them can linger out there yeah. you know oh, fuck. and then so i youtubed <laughs> it i youtubed it and there was literal attacks from like, the alligators or yeah. From, yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah like right there yeah yeah, I was like looking at like the lifeguard house or whatever. Yeah. And there was like a, a YouTube video of like a woman with her foot bit off bleeding and like they had to get emergency. Like someone like filmed Even just it. the videos where it's like a fucking drone like yeah. going over the top and you see, see all like the sharks. a dude yeah. in the water. Yeah. And he's being circled by this shark or this fucking gator yeah. or something. And he doesn't even know. Yeah. And like nothing happens. No, yeah, exactly. But it's just the idea that like he didn't even know that that <laughs> yeah. thing was like moments away from fucking like, you, you know either just hurting or killing him yeah. and it's like yeah that's like how i feel the entirety of the time i'm like even like on the beach i'm like oh, i'd like if i put my foot in that might be the moment that yeah. like it's like swimmed by and it's like, ah. would you rather know or not know hmm. 
probably not know is better. So I, uh, my <laughs> uncle is a big surfer in uh, Spain. He lives in the Canary Islands, cool, on yeah. Puerto Ventura. And uh, I surfed out there with him once. Well, I attempted to surf out there one, with him once. And uh, we like paddle out. And like I hadn't surfed for like years at that point. So I didn't know what I was doing. And like I don't have the like you know, strength for it and all that shit. And like just paddling out there is super intense. It's like maybe like 10 foot of shelf. And then you're like in the fucking yeah. ocean, you know? Um, Where the like sharks dark are. Dark fucking blue. Dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It literally goes from like crystal clear to black. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, great. Like, yeah. Like now, like over that threshold of like safety or whatever. But yeah, I'm like paddling out and getting hit back by waves and shit. And finally, I get out yeah. to the break point. It probably took me like an hour of paddling. And it takes like, so much strength just oh, to get dude, out. There. Yeah. 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 You like, if you don't know how to duck and yeah, do all yeah. the proper shit, you're just like every. By the time every I little, got out. Like every 10 feet yeah. you go forward, you're getting pushed back nine or something. It but, happened to me. I went surfing once too. And by the time I got out, there just balancing on the board yeah, every exhausted. muscle in my yeah, body yeah, was like, and i did catch a wave actually like oh, yeah. my friend helped push me into he was it like a longboard yeah 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 and i got up too because you know i skated yeah, and all that shit yeah, yeah. but then after that wave i literally just went back to shore yep. and they were all still out there surfing i was just well, laying so yeah down. that's kind of what happened is like <laughs> i finally got out to him and like he's like sitting there and i'm like you know all out of breath and shit and like i sit up and like maybe like couple seconds go by and he's like take this next wave and like let's go in yeah and i'm like what like you know you know i just spent so long trying to get out here like why would we do that and he, he seemed serious and he was like take this next wave it's a good one like trust me take this yeah, next yeah, wave yeah. or whatever and so i like turn and i paddle and i stand up for like a half a second and yeah, fall yeah. over and get like washed in and like end up just swimming in because he was following me and i was like what the fuck was the point of that and he was like yeah, I know you're terrified of sharks, and there was, like, two great whites underneath us, and, like, oh, I didn't damn. want you to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, thank God you didn't tell me, because yeah. there's no way I would have been composed enough to, yeah. like, do anything Fuck in that. that but you know? So, like, yeah, obviously, ignorance is definitely bliss in those settings Fuck for me. That. But, like, yeah. yeah, dude, I also didn't go out again that, the, you know, yeah. like, I'm, that's that's well, it. I'm ever? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, my brother was like, you're going to, like, I'm going out there in October, and he's like, you're going to surf with Peter? And I was like, Fuck no, no dude. No, like I'm gonna dip my yeah, feet. Yeah, I was like, I, I was like, last time I did that, he was like, why not? And I was like, last time I did that, he told me there was two sharks under us. He's like, he was just fucking with you. I was like, ah, dude, like he literally came in. Like I don't like, it wasn't a joke. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, dude. Like I'm fucking terrified of that. Yeah, shit. that's like, scary, dude. Not, like, and again, I know like the the probability is like fucking uh, so. I don't know. But yeah, exactly. I don't believe that. I, I feel like I'm the one. Like, that's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like. Yeah. like <laughs> And it's Fuck like, I, I, I'm definitely a big believer of like, you know, like whatever you kind of like, I don't know what you think about can manifest and like all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So like, if you're constantly like, like, because I'm, you know, I'm probably doing it to myself. Like I'm constantly tell people I about how that. terrified I am of sharks. Like I'm going to be that one, yeah. that fraction of the humanity that gets that experience. You know, I, <laughs> I like, thought about it too. Cause I thought about that, the manifestation part, like yeah. you're almost like speaking to the shark's third eye. Totally. Yeah, like yeah. you're like, a tr cause, cause yeah, it's, it's like, like people that are like terrified of co driving in the car, you know, and yeah. like every moment's like a life threatening moment in the car. Like it's more probable. Die. In a car accident. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I'm like, uh-uh. Like, I'm just going to remove myself. Like, I, so, yeah, when we were in, like, Turks and Caicos, like, my family's all, like, wakeboarding and, like, cliff jumping and all this shit. And I'm just, like, sitting on the boat. And, like, like it looks super fun. Like, I would love to do it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm not doing it. Well, I, I had that thought, too, when I was in Hawaii. I was snorkeling at Shark's Hawaii's Cove. like, shark fucking central. Yeah. yeah. And I was out in Sh uh, Shark's Cove. And there's, like, tourists and stuff like that. But I went, like beyond like yeah, i was yeah. far out like there wasn't even fucking reef anymore i was just being adventurous yeah there was boulders the size of like houses like just on and i was it was that deep yeah, it was yeah. like fucking hundreds of feet deep but you know you're buoyant you're floating yeah, on yeah. your stomach snorkeling yeah. and then i thought about it i was like they call this shark's cove like you know <laughs> and then i thought about it i was like maybe it was just like a nickname yeah, and yeah. i was like i don't know yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a nickname because of the sharks like, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and i mean i've you know i'm not like like, I don't, like, completely miss out on the experiences yeah, yeah. when I go. Like, I'll snorkel and, like, you know, like, I, I do think, like, someday, like, my partner talks a lot about, like, scuba diving versus yeah. snorkeling. And, like, even her, she's like, yeah, like, when I'm snorkeling, like, I feel more vulnerable and whatnot and, yeah. like, exposed. But, like, when you're actually in it and, like, deep down and all that, like, you feel more, like kind of like a part of it and yeah. like all that but it's so like, intriguing yeah, i actually yeah. had a and the ocean's fucking fascinating, fascinating. like we don't well we that's because you're barely, a, you're you're an ocean guy yeah, we you know? barely you're, you're scratched fish. the surface <laughs> yeah. of it you know yeah but then i'm also like you know like the dinosaurs that exist still or whatever the ocean ones 
it's so like what what don't like what haven't we like happened or like oh yeah you know like what haven't we found or like we found it and it obliterated any finding of it you know like it's like yeah and and like i think we know more about space than the shit. ocean maybe no i think so <laughs> so i actually had a panic attack one time i was at like the westchester tattoo convention and okay. i just smoked like a joint and uh, I was, do it. yeah, no, but it wasn't, it wasn't that. I mean, I was already feeling kind of panicky. I was yeah, tired. Yeah. You know, I didn't eat. It was like the end of a convention, you know, like you're all fucking overworked, yeah, yeah. tattoo brain, probably when you're socialed out and you need oh, to yeah. go. Oh, yeah. I used to get like panicky after conventions because there's just so much focus, so many stimulants, oh, yeah. so many people, so much hello, you know? Yeah. So I, I was like, just at this bar, I was having a beer. I just smoked a joint and I'm standing out on this like back deck and some guy starts talking to me randomly and he told me he's a scuba diver and he started telling me like, oh, the unknown and the intriguing, you know, like it's it's a whole nother world down there, man. Yeah, yeah. And he kept telling me it's another world. Yeah. And then he just looked at me and he goes, you should try it. It's another, it's another world. You'll never know what you experience until you try. And I was just like high as fuck. And I was just like, and I literally sent me into like a panic because I started envisioning this like unknown world. Yeah, yeah, like all this shit that I don't know about. Yeah, and I was just like really high <laughs> and tired. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I like literally had to go back to my hotel room and I just kept, I still can remember. Yeah. He was just like, it's another world, man. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, we'll do that, man. Like, yeah. weed I is even, a powerful drug. I even have man. that shit with like getting tattooed sometimes. Like, I've like kind of like gotten to a point where I don't really like smoke that night anymore. Like, I pretty much smoke every night, like, mostly like once I'm done with the day and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, like now, like maybe like the night before a tattoo session and that like me getting tattooed and then like also like the night of getting tattooed, like I kind of like lay off of it just because like yeah. I've had it where I like. I like smoke the night before and then I'm like, can't sleep. And I'm just terrified about like what I'm about to like, you know, I'm like all like, yeah. do I, well, it's an unknown. You're doing a permanent yeah, thing. yeah. Like, Oh my God. Like, do I want a full black, you know, like, yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like all these like questions start running in my head and like, yeah, like I've done that with so many sessions where I get home and I like smoke and then I'm like, what have I done? Like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm like, I'm fucked, you know, yeah. like I did this thing and then I wake Tumbling. up the next morning and I'm like stoked that I did the thing. Cause now I'm sober again. And yeah. Thinking like, you know, with like my actual rational brain and all of that. But yeah, sometimes I think I weed think, is uh, shouldn't be understated. It's, oh, a, it's pretty. It's like a weirdly powerful substance. Very powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, especially like if you go down the rabbit hole of like, like all the other forms of weed, you know, like mm. fucking concentrate. Fucking it's crack. Like, yeah, literally are fucking edibles, like yeah. strong edibles. Edibles are insane. Dude. It's literally like, psychedelic. It's a, different, it's a different chemical that's like happening at that point it like converts when it's like like a yeah edible versus it is a like dude I, yeah, yeah. i'd rather do like a bunch of mdma right now yeah than a, a strong edible 100 percent. like like because i know yeah. with the mdma i'm gonna have a good experience well, especially if you gotta talk to anybody like, yeah, yeah 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 sometimes like i'll like smoke before like you know i have a day off or something and i'm like get high and then i'm like going to the grocery store and i'm by myself or something and like like fucking people are coming up to me to like try to talk to me about like my tattoos yeah. or shit on my head or whatever and i'm just like oh man like i was not ready you know like yeah. i thought i was just going to the grocery store and gonna like buy my groceries and come home Dude, a late like, night grocery store visit i one time i did a 10 milligram edible on there and it's like I, but i don't take them yeah, yeah so it was like a lot for yeah, me yeah. and and i was at the grocery store like at 11 like you know before they close at yeah, like yeah. midnight or whatever and it's just like it was like it was a fucking trip yeah. like I was in there for the whole hour, like, and I just like kept one. And I was like, keep going to the same aisle, like oh, yeah, what fucking looking for? yeah. Like, and then I started thinking I was like avoiding people there, yeah. like they saw me a few times, yeah. and I was like looking at like the ingredients so yeah. deeply, like well, I can't pronounce these words. And oh, I started yeah. thinking like, what's in the food? Yeah, you know, and I call this shit like yeah, it's wild, dude. Like I like I said, I like smoke almost every day, and it's like I've had experiences where I like smoke a new strain, and then I like literally have a fucking like bad trip like yeah. where i'm like like not even that long ago i had like i had like took a dab of some new strain i'd never had before and like i like got so fucking high and then i like literally was having a panic attack and i was yeah. like crying in my partner's lap and yeah. she's like you're gonna be okay dude it's weed yeah. you know but i'm like in this moment i'm like what the fuck why do i feel this way <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, why yeah. is this so intense like yeah yeah, at that point, I would have rather took it like acid or something. <laughs> like, if, yeah. if I'm going down the same rabbit hole, I might as well get something out of it. I've like, had it where like it made me have like a, almost like a blood sugar drop oh, feeling. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I feel like almost like nauseous yep. and like when you stand oh, up, yeah, and it's yeah. weird. You stand up too fast. Yeah, and I'm like, that, like sit back down. <laughs> so now, like, I, and I learned that with age and maturity. Like, if I'm out somewhere and I'm having a good night and a good time, and someone yeah, like pants is a joint, I'm just like, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I'm in a good mind state. Yeah, like, I don't need that to do that. Like, I because many times it just 
it like made it worse. Like, yeah, and it was weird too. Cause like going back to art school and stuff, like I, I mean, from pretty much high school forward, like I always smoked weed and I smoked weed before I did anything, you yeah. know? Um, and like, it felt like it was like a key part of like my painting practice and yeah. shit, you know, like I had this like ritual, like I would like come into my studio, I would light frankincense, I would smoke a bowl yeah. and then I'd start painting. And like, um, and then like, I think it was once I finally actually started tattooing that I like was like kind of started dialing back the weed because like it would just be too anxious or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and also the like human interaction part of that. Too. Sure. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I need yeah. to be like dialed. Makes for, you like, more introverted, yeah, or at yeah. least for me. Yeah, I had a few times where like I, you know, had a homie I was tattooing or something and like they were like, you want to smoke? And I was like, yeah, I mean, if you're comfy with it, like I, you know, I, I confidently make art high. So, yeah. Like this should be fine or whatever. And then I like couldn't even talk to my homie. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, shit, dude. Like, I don't, I, I gotta like, I either gotta be here or here, you know, like yeah. I can't do both. And so then it gets quiet and then it's just kind of like, that's, that's not what I want to be doing. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah, like with going to like conventions or whatever, like this is really like the f uh, first convention I've been at where like I'm not working. Yeah, and yeah. So like all I'm doing is going around and talking to people and taking photos and stuff. And it's like, yeah, like not smoking before that makes it like, I don't know, like I can just be like authentic and like like not in my head and like confident like i can talk to people really well if i'm sober so you, you generally don't smoke when you tattoo no no, no. i don't ever smoke when i tattoo. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, i've done yeah. it like a few handful of like times on, on like a or brother or on like yeah, yeah. Like a homie uh, like i'd rather like me i'd rather have like a beer like and like a beer not yeah, that like, i don't done that i don't yeah, do yeah. that i don't do that yeah. now i used to earlier in my yeah. career but now i would never but like sometimes because i always have like bottles of whiskey in yeah. here and so like i'll have a client who's like loves whiskey too totally. and i'll be like oh you got the you know the van winkle or you know yeah. or i never tried the austin one or whatever and i'll like pour them a ounce or two and we'll like but it's we're not like it's not getting totally. drunk like yeah, it's just yeah. like tasting it yeah. kind of but like yeah i can't I, I just tattoo sober at this point no matter what you know 100 percent. yeah i don't even eat <laughs> like literally, I stopped I, doing that. I stopped like, doing that. I eat now. Yeah, I heard. I heard you and Andy Fo like talking about that, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like, I get like a nice meal, like yeah, mid yeah. tattoo. See, and I did that when I worked at uh, Michael's shop, like, like because that was like kind of like the vibe, and it was also like, yeah, really, really long days. Always yeah. like twelve hours at yeah. the shop or whatever. Now I'm like. I'm in, I mean, I, I get to the shop pretty early. Like I'm normally like 10 to 10 30 and I start at noon. Yeah. Um, but like, then, you know, again, it takes me like 10 minutes to set up and I'm like ready. Do you but, eat before you go? Yeah. Yeah. So lately I've been like, my partner and I've been kind of like, I don't know. We've been on a, a pretty like healthy kick a little bit. So like we do like a really, really big smoothie in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we don't eat until just dinner. a lot of calories yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But bar like almost barely to some degree. Like I, I feel like it's processed so quickly, you know, yeah, it's like, true, that's true. just like in and out. Um, well, I think you get used to your patterns too. Yeah, yeah. Cause I used to not eat, but now I think because I got healthier and like lost weight and all that stuff, like yeah. my body's like looking for, well, and I think that's like everything. It's like the, you create the habit and then that's like what you have to keep up with. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, so if you're eating a ton, like you're going to need to eat because yeah, like yeah. that's what your body's used to. Sure. And it takes a minute to like break that cycle for sure. And obviously like, yeah, right now it was funny. Like we've been going and getting all these bomb food here, like all yeah. this vegan junk food and all this sure. shit. This town uh, has a lot of so much. Food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like great. And, and that's like our almost like more than anything, that's like our favorite thing to do when traveling. Like, yeah, like yeah. we're like, you know, like weeks before we came here, like I was already looking, shit looking at vegan options and, you know, like yeah, I'm sure trying to figure out, here. oh, so good, dude. Yeah. Um, and Denver sucks, honestly. So like, <laughs> yeah, I would think, I would think the opposite. Yeah, totally. I thought Milwaukee was better than Denver. Like, really? I, I totally thought it would have been the opposite. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're yeah. Not, we're there was some super... good food in Milwaukee from what I remember. I, yeah, great. Yeah. People eat. I like Midwest. Milwaukee, like low yeah, yeah. key. Like, it's no, like... I, and I, I like, I, I love it more now. Mm. Like when I go home, I'm actually like, I like this. Will like, you ever be go back there? You I think? Know, no, think so. no. <laughs> that's how I feel about New Jersey too, yeah. though. Like, uh, I, I'm sure I'll, like I'll gain an appreciation too the longer I'm away. That's the thing that's been yeah. doing it for me is like, uh, like, it's almost been four years now. Um, and so like, yeah, the first couple of times I went home, I, I was like, it was, a dr you know, everything that's how about I felt. it was like negative. That's like, how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. Did, what, you know, I went for the holidays and it was great. Exactly. I'm like, yeah, oh, this yeah, fucking yeah. shit. I got this jacket. Yeah. And, and I would start shit with my family. Yeah. And, like, I did the same thing. The first time I went back, I was like literally arguing with my mother. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, fuck this place. I hate yeah. this place. And Which this I think like, it's almost necessary. I don't know. I like watched that with my middle brother. My middle brother was really the only one that like left. Like he like moved to Utah at one point, like for college. And then like, he like came back and then he moved to Washington. Like he, yeah. he was the only one that ever got out. Like yeah. me and my other brother, like my other brother lived in Illinois. So it was like pretty much still, you know, he was Close an hour enough. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I, I always saw whenever my brother would like come back and then like, 
almost be getting ready to leave. Like we, they, they, he would, there would be tension with everyone, you yeah, know, like there yeah. was arguments with my parents, arguments with us and all this shit. And then like, I started to kind of almost notice like that in myself too, when I was going to leave. And it's like, I think it's necessary to some degree, you know, you're almost like setting yourself because it's like intense to like leave, you know, it and, is like, intense. Like just like start over and it's, all that it's shit. A lot. It's, it's scary and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And so I, and like, you know, you're going to miss those, like you, you're not leaving I mean, maybe there's certain people you're leaving intentionally, but like your family <laughs> yeah. and friends that you care about and shit, you're not leaving like because you don't want to yeah. be near them. Yeah, anymore. you're doing like it to you expand want. yourself. Yeah, right? yeah. Like you still, like you wish they were coming too or something. Yeah, yeah. And so I feel like you almost like intentionally have to like create some tension Dude, and I know separation and shit so that you can leave. It's like you're justifying to your ego. Like yeah. you're creating like turmoil. Yeah, like yeah. Some you're like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be here. Yeah, like I yeah. shouldn't be here. Dude, like I did I'm the same leaving thing. Leaving for the right reason. I was at the holidays last year, like all miserable. Yeah. Like arguing this fucking place sucks. There's yeah, no yeah. good food here. Like, yeah, and I, I feel to? like that—that that was how I was like the first year and a half to two years after yeah. I left. And like now, I go home and I'm like genuinely enjoy yeah. spending time with my my family and my friends. And, I like, think I'm getting closer. going out in Milwaukee and like seeing the city again and being downtown and being like. Oh, it's actually like a really cool city. Like, or it's like, oh, that building like, wasn't here. I remember oh, man, I, that, so much of that. That happened dude. to me when, even last time I went yeah, back. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they demolished that house from the corner. Yeah. You know, like, so much shit is changing yeah. with that for sure. It's interesting uh, though. I, I, I like the way you put it because that's exactly how I felt. Like, yeah. let me sabotage this so yeah, I could yeah. justify it like mentally yeah. why I like abandoned like yeah. what I love. You know, but I think it's also like good too because then like I think I mean moving wise like it's super good and like I'm even feeling like oh like maybe I need to do that again soon because mm, I'm yeah. almost at like four years. I thought about about that too that i like happen. i'm comfy you know like yeah, i got a yeah. good setup like i got my shop i got like my house like like everything's good you know yeah and i'm like i could see myself just staying there for forever but i'm like two places to live like my whole life yeah like, that's not enough i agree with know? that i've said that already yeah. like i don't think i settle here i think i do yeah. like a stint like yeah, you were yeah. saying and then i go to like the next cool yeah because the more shit you accumulate yeah. it's like it makes it harder to move again and all that yeah. so like i'm even kind of like we've been kicking around the idea of like maybe san diego in a few years or yeah something yeah like yeah, that. yeah 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 uh, but it's also hard because like everywhere you go you can also see why you don't want to be you know it's like yeah like, oh i really love this but i hate this and like you know it is well, there's like it pros is. and cons yeah, to everything yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, with like moving to Denver, like there was like a lot of pros for sure. Um, but then there's also like, you know, a few things where I'm like, ah, like I'm, I'm, I liked that better in Milwaukee, like the food. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like there's like certain little things for sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same with me with like New Jersey. I mean, New York City, right? I was like right on the border yeah. of that. You know, you got all these. So have you only lived New Jersey and now Austin? Yeah. But like I worked it. in New York City yeah, and yeah. I was on the like the border over there. So it's, it's like basically a suburb of New York City. Yeah, yeah. So like New York City was the city, you know. Yeah. But it, yeah, you know, you got like museums, you know, you got like every band will well i mean here is good with music and all yeah, that yeah. too but like you know everyone's gonna tour through new york yeah. you know it's just like it's very you know large yeah, that's it's kind of the york. same with like like denver for sure it's like a hub yeah which is like cool and like it's also like for work it's been incredible like yeah 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 um, i like, could see I your like style I, really that in that there. for sure is like like stylistically like of all the like my style isn't you know overall it's like growing in popularity in the u.s but it's like european is really sure. the people that fuck with but i could I see your style working real well in any like progressive aggressive kind exactly. of city like it would probably it. work well here yeah yeah totally and you know? uh, this is so far like i mean i've mostly really kind of just been denver austin and san diego lately i used to go up to la but like la i feel like all the la clientele that i had moved to austin <laughs> yeah probably so like yeah i call this like the new la yeah yeah it's like it a is cleaner <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a smaller more quaint la yeah, yeah. with like more music and yeah. like more you know it's got a lot of the same for same sure. shit going on for sure yeah yeah um and yeah, and so like here has been really good for work too. Like yeah, this is bet. the only guest spot I, I can be really select about which clients I choose. And like I have like a backlog of people for the next one and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, moving from like Milwaukee to Denver, like that increased like my travel clients like, mm -hmm. like tenfold. Like Oh, I, yeah. And obviously I think too, like where <laughs> I was at in my career, like when I moved out of uh, Milwaukee, I think I was only like mm, – maybe nearing like two and a half years yeah, you're of tattooing. less established yeah, yeah, yeah. Less so known. i think that like played into it big but like yeah i maybe had like 10 percent travel client. but denver's like a destination more totally than and Milwaukee. that's what makes it so yeah. easy is it's like like people like will maybe reach out and you know maybe they're not doing great research and like think like, you know read my bio that i'm in denver but they're like oh where are you based and then i'm like denver and then they're like oh bet like you know like that could work i've like, been I'm, wanting to go there yeah, i want to go to red rocks yeah, or yeah, i want to yeah. like you know go to the go skiing 
skiing in the mountains or like yeah, I have a homie that lives there so I can crash on the couch and yeah. this can be like more affordable of an option exactly. or whatever. Yeah, so same like, here I think is yeah. very like that. Yeah. People want to like go to the yeah, you know, comedy clubs here. now and like the yeah. same thing. They hear it's a happening place yeah. or, you know, they have like their bachelor party here and they, you know, like there's all kinds of fucking shit going yeah. on like that. And then I think it's also good for 